I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> I still have a couple of exercises to do. To, God damn it. I ran out of time. <sighs> um, yeah, I know, right, Caboose? Um, uh, first song, first song, first song. I, I don't know whether. I'm sorry. No idea. And I'm not paying Pretzel Rock's premium subscription. It's no or never. Um, of course, I could just do them now. Um, God, I'm tempted. Wither. When the VOD goes up, replay the first part of the uh, first part of it and ask your phone. Meathead Street. You know what? Fuck it. Oh. I have overhead presses and some triceps to do still. So fuck off. As, as my set of eight, I do uh, 12, 10, 8, 6. Um, <laughs> every market. Uh, yeah. And let's see. Triceps. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, six, seven, and eight. We'll do this in sort of like a superset um, for the non-meatheads. Uh, basically, you just flow from one to the other. I'm just going to give a couple of seconds to my muscles to recover. I have one more set of six to do overheads, one more set of six to do triceps, and then theoretically I'm done with this, this sort of portion of my arms. So <laughs> then I'll return to stream. But yeah. <laughs> like, that's the identifiable tattoo side. So just, you know. Um... <sighs> and yeah. Five, six. I've already done my rows, I've already done curls. Uh, now I did some overhead presses and some tricep pushes. All right, I feel better about that. I feel better about that. I hate leaving stuff unfinished like that. So, thank you. Oh. oh, I needed to exercise. Dude, everything's been going wrong. Everything's been going wrong. I just, I had to, I needed to exercise. <laughs> just put it that way. Whew. Um. All right, so what level of, um, it's not even like halfway done yet. Uh, yeah, it's halfway done. Oh, so everybody, how's everybody's day? What are y'all up to? Did you get anything done? Would you have a better day than I did? Whole bunch of technology I set up in the early AM. Woke up. None of it was working correctly. None of it. Had to start from scratch. Had to start from scratch. And my body's completely flared because of reasons that we can't get to on stream. Uh, <laughs> legality. Um, so, yeah, I'm just sort of fuck, fucking miserable. I may have to take uh, off a little early um, in the stream as well just to grab some food out of the kitchen. I may, doing, may do, end up doing an eating stream at, that, at this rate. Wither was doing some writing. I want to see that writing, Wither. Um... Let's see. What shared content just get? Oh, yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, I saw the Stalin thing. Kai Mukbang one. Uh, I've... Oh, shit. I actually need to go check those. When did I put those in? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go check them. I have a couple of sweet potatoes. Big fucking sweet potatoes, too. Um, baking in the oven. So, I'll be right back. sweaty yes yes this may end up being the most casual stream yet um ah yes oh fucking based copies told you they were on our side I honestly yeah I mean I did dude last night I read what 20 pages worth of my own writing did a bunch of education punched down at a bunch of fucking stupid ass people um holy shit man fucking flat earthers and fucking racial segregationists and holy fuck man there were some dumb people last night that was that was staggeringly stupid thank you Buddhist. um yeah so I think I earned a casual one. I'm physically miserable. I'm mentally kind of tortured right now. Um, yeah, I think I earned a casual stream. Oh. Oh. I don't know what I want to do today. Honestly, we'll just wait and see what washes in. Second almost. Uh, Marcus, I'm not going to talk about that. That's just, that's unnecessary stirring of drama bullshit. Like, I'm not, yeah. The people who know about it and were involved in it know about it and don't want to talk about it either. So, why should I? It's, you know, it was just for the best. It was for the best. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's. That's the kind of uh, drama stirring bullshit that other Twitch streamers would do. Um, do I see eco fashion problem or not? Yeah, Anya, I, um, Kat and I both have suspected that Gen Z is going to go eco fashion on us. Yeah, it, I, it actually concerns me. It's a thing I worry about a little bit. Yeah. Um. Hey, Kazzy. Um, what do we got? Okay. Um, so, Wither, do you mind if I read this out loud? <laughs> Fucking A. Right off the bat, redacted. I just sat down. Um, oh, thank you for the resub, Kaz. Um, no, but that's okay. Uh, I'm used to it. Um, yeah, Caboose, no, I don't, like, that's the thing, is contextually I understand it. I'm just concerned that it's going to happen. Um, sure, okay, cool. Um, this is what Wither got written today. A nation with some of the dark, <laughs> a nation with some of the darkest history across all of Arcanum. <laughs> Arcanum. I like it. Um, responsible for abuse and death on a scale incomprehensible compared to the numbers in history kept from those times. A constant fight for authority for thousands of years and curses spread like wildfire to the people. Hmm. What draft number is this wither? Um, this is where the last king of this era was gifted the crown from his brother after he learned he would have no son to take the throne from him after he would succumb to the curse of nightmare, capital N, of nightmare, 
something that stood out from most curses for how easily its induction could have been spread. Uh, Archon quickly used his magic to empower the people rebelling against him by offering his people the ability to thrive and daring for a challenger in his final moments before his insurrection gave his enemies an induction he had concocted to rebuke the effects of the nightmare curse and spread the knowledge of how to build a healthier community and individual from the ashes of this era draft one okay cool 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 then um take it along with his life and his brothers who had been consumed by the curse frightening madden fighting madden and maddeningly maddeningly jesus christ kai fighting maddeningly and in the years following the death, the kingdom was dismantled and the people were given the cure for the nightmare alongside familiars and spirits who would pass on the education and power to make the change they needed. Nowadays, the people generally live without rulers and able to live for themselves as much as for each other, uh, as much as for each other, curses and so-called kings still spring up in the ranks, but it's not so one-sided now. Hey, Squee. Um, okay, so let me get redacted. Um, All right, there's your spin redacted. Um, yeah, there's a couple of notes I would give you um, with her, but honestly, it looks like um, it looks like you're going for um, sort of an anarchistically inspired um, fantasy, like sci-fi fa fantasy thing. Hey, Tashi. Um, oh. Way. Don't you go don't you go simping for me now, Squee. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just nothing's Yeah, yeah, Wither. It's a little awkwardly worded in places for sure. Um I I'd I'd like to give it another read through because my first reading was not great of it. There's some cadences that I hit incorrectly. But yeah, there's there's some tightening that could be done, but it's it's a first fucking draft and it's cool as shit. Um, the magic system is hypnosis, thus induction. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I at first, I, I, I had a moment, I was like, infection? No, he means induction. Um. <laughs> oh, squee. Uh, I bought my ex his first skirt. It arrived today. Nice, Kez. Um. Oh, good night, Jan. <clears throat> I just noticed that. Oh. <sighs> All right. I got a couple of things going in the background, too. Um, yesterday was such a disappointment. The, like, first half of the day before and then yesterday, it was just so fucking. And then and I'm still flared. Uh, I wish I could talk more about that, but I can't in open comms. Um, and it just, like, I'm just physically miserable. Mentally, I'm taxed. I, ha I had shit to do this weekend, but I don't, I'm not entirely sure I'm up to it, quite frankly. Um, yeah. And um, brutally, I wish I were still exercising. Like, yo, um, <laughs> Anya, um, they exist. They exist. Uh, they're far, uh, far less pronounced on me than they are on my cousin. Um, he got them like hardcore as a child. Um, but yeah, they are a bit of a, a thing. Nah, guys, I'm good. Um, no, there's literally nothing anybody can do. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Wither. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and y'all are in my in the way of me exercising more right now, so you should feel guilty. Uh, <sighs> so I forget which one who's handling. I always, I always, dude. I I feel bad about it, but I never keep them straight in my head. Um. I think it's the Church of Satan. Um, 
Hey, sweet. Um, is working on fighting that stupid Texas shit. They're doing it on constitutional, uh, constitutionally protected religious grounds. Um, so, like, that's that was, you know, something. Later, Kez. Take care of yourself. Thanks for the raid. Sleep well. Say hi to um, say hi to Joey. Yeah, it's it's whichever one doesn't suck. I think it's the the satan the satanic temple is Levey, which is the the idiot one, um, and then the yeah uh, is it I I no 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 wait wait I I dude I forget. I always forget. I, I completely fucking mix them up all the time. Satanic temple. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's the church of... Uh, 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 satanic temple is the good one. The church of... Sa uh, the uh, the satanic temple is the good one. The church of Satan is the bad one. So that's LaVey or whatever. Um, I, I... Dude, I don't know. Fucking... Hang on. It's the Satanic Temple. Um, the Satanic Temple is the uh, the the one going after him. Um, they've already filed. Um, <laughs> Ellie, uh, thank you for the clarification. Then, um, yeah, the Satanic Temple um, has already filed legal paperwork to protect their members. Um, uh, you know, as abortion is a religious right in their practice. So. It would be, f <clears throat> wouldn't it be fucking funny if like one of the byproducts of this bullshit Texas does is like a massive, like multi-point increase in Satanists in Texas. That would be hilarious. That'd be fucking hilarious. Like they're they're like point zero one percent of the population, and then like overnight, they've got like fourteen percent or some shit like that. That would be fucking hilarious if like a a knock on effect of this abortion crap in Texas is that they create a whole bunch of quote unquote Satanists. Oh, I would laugh. I would laugh. I would laugh. I I honestly I'd giggle for days. I'd just be sitting around fucking just. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be. Mm. chef's kiss um it would it would be hugely poetic um part of the satanic temple just in case i want medical anything without question nice weather um i mean i suppose i should sign up right like i'm already an ordained minister like can't i get I'm sorry, I'm just concocting another grift. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, wait a second. The only time the Bible mentions abortion is in the parable of the bitter herb or bitter water, right? Um, in which it instructs a priest how to conduct an abortion. I wonder if I could refute it on my own ordinational grounds. Hmm. Okay. Um, does bitter water contain ivermectin? No, because it's bitter. It doesn't taste like apple horse paste. Um, fucking horse paste, man. Fucking, I'm telling you, the world ended in 2021. The Mayans were right. The world ended in 2021. We're just living in some weird shared hellscape. Um, it 
Interesting. Um, I just I was just thinking about it. Um, I would like to donate to them though. Like it's twenty five dollars for a membership card. I'm sure it costs them cents. Um, all right, I'll do that. Throw them a few bucks. Be good for them. Um, if this is supposed to be hell, I think I'd rather take the eternal fire for this. That's the thing is, honestly, I mean, it is kind of a shared hellscape at this point. Um, <sighs> All right. Um, okay, so I can't show you that video. Maybe I don't know. Hang on. Let me let me let me give it a look to this this video really quick. Oh. Um, yeah, I can't watch I, I can't watch that video on uh, on stream. Um, so Minneapolis Police Department beat this black dude, um, Jaleel Stallings, after he was fully face down unarmed because their unmarked van rolled up into the parking lot and started shooting at him. Um, and so he fired in self-defense. Hey, better win. Um, I can't show the video because it's, I, I'm pretty sure the video is TOS. Um, but yeah, the cops rolled up in an unmarked van in a parking lot and started tossing rounds. I think they were fucking 40 millimeter, um, less than lethal. He straight up was like, dude, I thought they were white supremacists shooting at me. So he fucking pulled out his, his piece and fired back. And yeah, the cops fucking pour out of this fucking van and, um, he gets on the ground and, you know, disarms and he is fully face down on the ground, unarmed, and they beat the shit out of him while he's on the ground, face down, unarmed. And we have the, we have the body cam footage. I mean, um... No, those are kilts, Cottonmouth, which I suppose are a type of script. Uh, things are happening. Yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's, he, he was acquitted of the eight charges that the DA tried to hit him with. Um, the governor of, uh, <laughs> Uh, the governor of um, uh, Minnesota had warned the members of the black community that there were white supremacists about, and he took that warning to heart. He protected himself constitutionally, as is protected by the Second Amendment, and when fired at randomly from an unmarked white van in a parking lot in the middle of the night, he protected himself as is guaranteed by the constitutional uh, constitutional rights he, he has. Um, they beat the ever-loving fuck out of him um, and then charged him with eight different counts of bullshit. But... Yeah. Full acquittal. Um, that didn't fly. And now there is um, footage of the nine minutes of the aftermath because the SWAT team was told to turn off their cameras. So his attorneys managed to, oh, um, we still don't really know Caboose. Um, we do know this, okay? We know why, we know why Caboose. I mean, okay, we know why. Um, it's difficult to, prove it let's just put it that way um sergeant andrew battelle um told his swat team that um there's a group in the parking lot in the north um and apparently earlier in the evening there are there's testimony that battelle had informed his his teams 
quote, drive down Lake Street. You see a group, call it out. Okay, great. Fuck them up, gas them, fuck them up. So when they were told that there was, there were like black people in a parking lot at night, the SWAT team followed their sergeant's instructions. They rolled into the parking lot in an unmarked white van and started firing less than lethal rounds from 40 millimeter guns. Um, they're grenade launchers um, at uh, um, fucking uh, Julio Stallings. Sorry. Um, yeah, they um, after he was on the ground um, they need him. They punched him stomach chest and back for about 30 seconds continuously um multiple people punched and kicked him in the head neck stomach chest back they bodied him straight up um and when after they were done beating the ever-loving fuck out of him like straight up like fucking duh, 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 right um they told him to put his arms behind his back and he said i'm trying to but he couldn't because the officers were sitting on his arms while punching him. Put your arms behind your back. You have my arms pinned. They eventually managed to uh, handcuff him, and then they sit him up, and they kick it, and then Battelle kicks him in the fucking ribs as Stetson, one of the other SWAT team officers, continues hitting him in the head. After they've got him handcuffed and sat up. Stetson, the one hitting him about the head, was instructed to stop, but he continued. Even after told, that's it, stop it, it's okay. He continued hitting him. Um, at this point, they radio in the incident as other officers can be seen on the footage repeatedly tasing another person who was with Stallings, causing the man to scream in pain. Um, uh, yeah. At this point, you can hear in the footage, um, Battelle asking his unit, did anybody shoot? And nobody says they had. Even though... They had been firing rubber bullets a couple of minutes before, right? Who were the shooters? A respond, uh, an officer asked Patel. Nobody. He shot at us, then gave up. Shot right into the van, engaged with 40s. The other officers agree on the footage, saying they didn't shoot at Stallings. And um, during the December court hearing... The officer said that they didn't mean that they didn't shoot at him uh, 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 at all. They meant that they didn't shoot at him with live ammunition from a lethal weapon. And that technically their documentation was accurate. About nine minutes after all of this began, the unit ordered uh, was ordered by Battelle to turn off all of their body cameras. So everything after that point is not on the record for videography it goes um the police chief uh medaria arredondo who can go fucking um chew rocks for all i care released a statement indicating the in incident was under investigation saying quote I'm aware of the recent decision by the Honorable Judge Koch, who was part, uh, who was as, who as a part of his decision noted context is important, and that the officers had just been through four days of rioting, looting, arson, and the burning of the third precinct. Peaceful protests sometimes quickly escalated to violence. We respect the judicial process as well as the internal investigatory process, which is currently active. Hey, Vina. Yes, whether actually you do. 
Yeah, you kind of do. <sighs> so, yeah, there's your there's your um, your daily reminder that cops suck and the judicial system is rigged and fuck all of it. I mean, if anybody wants, um, I'll put the link to the article in shared content. It has, um, it has the videos in it. So if you want to watch the videos for yourself, you can. Um, nice Rev. Um, in other fuck that guy news, Elon Musk has said that he's good, he has plans to launch a satellite that would display ads in space. If I look up I mean caboose it's been a while since I've seen a proper ad. If I look up one night into the night sky and I see an ad for fucking Coke or Amazon or fucking Tesla I'm not entirely sure what I'll do. I gotta tell you, I, I, that's one of those things that could push me over the edge. That, that, I'm sorry. How is that legal? How is that, like, it, it, yeah, Marcus, oh man, where'd all these pitchforks and torches come from? Right? Like, honestly. How is that acceptable on in any way, shape, or form? How is that legal? Like, is that not... If I were, like, China, if I were anybody with, like, a, a space program, I'd knock that shit out of the fucking sky. Like, I can see that from my sky. And we did not give you permission. There was no licensing sought, and so we saw it as detritus, so we removed it. It was considered graffiti or vandalism. So we removed it. We'll be sending you a bill too, by the way. Like I'd fucking knock it right the fuck out. Advertisements should be considered weapons illegally. <laughs> it's actually kind of accurate. Um, so, did everybody see um, China has banned like sissy celebrities? China, China's coming down on um, effeminate men and like this sort of like Korean, Japanese pop star male icon sort of thing. Um, and so they they're banning sissy celebrities or at least they're they're making it very uncomfortable for them yeah uh it just it's like jesus christ really like i i <laughs> rev that's okay uh, James Charles would hate China. Um, yeah, I don't really care. We'd, either way, I, I'm not a fan of authoritarian mechanisms. Um, my stream title was not my topic. <laughs> wow, that ad enjoyed a whole half an hour of being in space before half the world fired missiles at it. Um, I mean, I'd root for whoever fucking did it. 
if Elon puts an ad in space, I'm rooting for whoever knocks it the fuck down. Yeah. Straight up. Uh, Cassidy, interestingly enough, a whole bunch of the fucking tankies online um, who have, like, the, the, the queer tankies immediately started, like, spitting and trying to backpedal as fast as they could for it. Um, well, they don't, they don't mean sissies. What they mean is, yeah, it, it definitely was a moment for them where they were like, oh shit, you know, pivot, 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 pivot. Cause we know that, um, you know, authoritarian hierarchical systems use patriarchal and, uh, toxic masculinity to reinforce themselves in the psyche of the men, um, whose brains they inhabit. It's a toxic ideology and it's a mechanism for mimetic spread of ideas. They use it just as much as Stalinistic Russia used it. They use it just as much as a whole host of culture, uh, subcultures and cultural norms use. So, yeah, oh wow, an authoritarian regime is homophobic. Who saw that coming? I don't, right, Caboose? Um, so, yeah, it was, it was an interesting moment for some of the uh, uh, online tanky dias diaspora. Who the fuck are you? And why are you? You know what? Fuck off. I'm I'm trying to have a nice Friday. Uh, if you want to start some shit, I'll finish some shit. Hey, Knots, shut the fuck up. No, it's not. It's corporate America, and Twitch is a private company, and they uh, uh, their terms of service extends to me, and they allow me to remove people such as you, yourself, and they can do it at will. In America, there's the right to refuse service for any reason. Freedom of speech does not extend into online platform space. Just as if you mouth off to a bartender, the bar can remove you from the bar. It's been this way your entire life, you dummy. The First Amendment and the freedom of speech only extends to your interaction with the United States government and how they interact with you. Not to any private company or entity. Now, if you would like to change that, that'd be great. I'd love to have that conversation about beginning to restrict private corporations and private companies and entities and commercial businesses from engaging in various spaces and tr transforming them into a more public entity. That's a wonderful idea, but I doubt you want me nationalizing Boeing anytime soon. So, shut the fuck up. Does this idiot not know why it's called the Spanish flu? <laughs> it's because Spain was the only one who fucking actually talked about it. It came from um, Fort Bragg or Fort Knox. I always forget which one. It's not. It's a multinational corporation. Your behavior is highly American. Look at me, asshole. Look at me. I'm an asshole. Um, fair enough, Wither. Call it as you see it. Um, fuck around and find out, right? He found out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Anya. Um, well, we'll see if we can't get some of that. 
some of that uh, coverage for you. Ah, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, the Missouri Capitol uh, was doing a um, gay rights histor uh, his uh, historical gay rights display. In 1966, Missouri was actually the heart of gay rights activism in America. If you're unfamiliar with LGBT history in America. Um, so during a two day conference, 40 people from uh, from 15 LGBT groups actually met in Kansas City to form a national planning conference uh, of various homosexual organizations um, back in 66. So basically, um, the uh, Cap Missouri Capitol put up a historical exhibit uh, showing that, you know, this is part of our history and this is, you know, not only our state history, but our national history. Um, so the homophobes went to town um, recently, uh, a couple days ago, actually, like three days ago. Um, and a lawmaker staffer complained and made the, um, the exhibit disappear on behalf of the lawmaker. Uh, technically four. Miz, technically four. I mean, technically five, but four. Um, so, yeah, I got a few. Hey, look, somebody talking about IQ usually are the dumbest people in the room. Especially when they, um, uh, the history of IQ is definitely wrapped up in racism. Um, that's always, it's, that's always a hilarious point when somebody who yells about racism starts using a racist metric to talk shit to people. That's always a hilarious moment in time. Um. Uh, Cassidy, it's Friday, um, and yeah, we actually did. Yeah, we're running low numbers today, which always is a bad sign. It's always a bad sign. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we have a low number stream, the fucking weirdos and crazies come out. It it's just seems to be, like, a pattern. It seems to be a pattern. I think, honestly, I think the dummies, the crazies, and the weirdos are more afraid of higher number streams. And so when you run a lower number stream, they think that they can pick on you. They think that they can have undue influence on the stream and they seem to flock. Um, I think that's the pattern, at least. What a nice, relaxing, fucking... Uh... Um, so 15 Miami-Dade um, redacted. Cool. Um, 15 Miami-Dade, Florida. 15 Miami-Dade educators have died from COVID in 10 days. 15 fucking teachers dead in 10 days in Florida. Just in Miami-Dade. Yeah, not even the entire state. Yes, Rev, yes. Yeah, he's, he's the one that was espousing the homophobic bitch. Yeah. The global white homo conspiracy that's attempting to turn bl her superior black men gay. Mm hmm. May she, may she rot in hell for all eternity. Hey, Maddie, you don't have any of those numbers. Cite your sources, Maddie. Cite your sources.
about you But you got me feeling some kind of way I'm gonna dive right in, I don't care Give me the word, tell me what do you say I think I know what I want, come on and vibe with me Don't let it go, I just want you to stay He's not. He's um, all sorts of uh, social control mechanisms are living rent free in his head. He is far from a free demand. Oh, Ashkenazi Jew. That means you have actually a superior IQ uh, on average. Your your uh, Ashkenazi is usually the the peak of IQ um, for uh, an ethnic group. There, um, I believe they outdo the uh, the Asian diaspora as well. Yeah, if you're talking IQ um, averages, then yeah, the Ashkenazi Jews are usually the highest of the pile. Um, Bitwin, yes. Um, it, it is like I said, lower numbers always makes this happen. Um. Hey, Maddie, you still got you got those sources for us yet? Or are you still talking out of your ass? Oh, boo boo, pookie, sweetheart. Oh, redacted. Not the best spin, but oh, I didn't want to tweak that ankle. And it kind of started coming down a little weird. <sighs> oh. Did you see, um, fucking all that shit about the uh, how the Chi uh, Chinese in Gabon uh, in Africa um, literally like they, they're colonizing the shit out of them um, a Chinese manager at a mine in the Rutsiro district uh, in western R Rwanda got caught on, uh, on tape like whipping an employee like literally like whipping the shit out of an employee um in Gabon, the Chinese literally cane locals as a hobby. They just literally, they run through the streets just caning them. I'm not shitting you. Like, it's, um, there's a, a local called uh, Neokuno Bota um, who has documented it and, like, gone on the record. They w run through the streets calling us monkeys and saying that we don't belong to the human race while caning us. Um... The Chinese are in Senegal. Um, they're demanding. Um, de uh, their demand for uh, forestry is creating domestic instability and literally wiping out Senegal's last forests. Uh, and um, in Gambia, um, uh, the, uh, there's a Chinese company whose owners intend to expand their factories, who are already poisoning the wa uh, the aquatic reserves of Ga uh, Gambia. They are, they're going full on colonialist in Africa. And there's a whole bunch of um, leftist activists in Africa who are sitting there going, we told you, we fucking told you how they operate, but you didn't do shit, did you? Um, Ghana, Ghana had arrested 124 Chinese citizens for illegal gold mining so far this year. Yep, I Asians get to be white now. Yeah, basically, that's how that'll work. It's like, oh, well, that's that's white people too now. Um, I I can't speak to whether the majority of Chinese factories have suicide nets, but there are significant factory complexes in China that have suicide nets. Yes, um, infamously, uh, the most infamous example of this is the Foxconn factory that when confronted with a large increase in suicides from their admittedly high roofs, they installed nets rather than improving the working conditions.
Yeah, I'm gonna need a direct link to the to whatever source you're citing, Maddie. I need a direct link. Sorry. CDC.gov reports 7,243 deaths. Now what? And you could still get COVID after taking it, girly boy. Oh, sweetheart, Pookie. Don't be mad just because you want to put it in my ass. I get it. You came in here and my, I made your PP feel weird. And now you're all, you're all turned up inside and you're trying to take your aggression out on me. I understand it, but it's okay. But I still need you to write, uh, cite your sources properly. Come on, I, I'm assuming you did at least high school, Maddie. Somebody had to teach you how to cite your sources at some point in your life. Come on, I know somebody taught you to do it. You can do it, Pookie. High school is for commies. I mean, it is socialized schooling. The taxpayers pay for your high school. You fucking commie. Uh. Cool. CDC.gov. Um... Well, it wasn't there. So Maddie's full of shit. I don't see 7,300 or whatever, 700, uh, 7,400, whatever the number was he pulled out of his ass. So, yeah. All right, well, that, that source was incorrect. Who's in? Thank you for the follow. Um, no, you work for the tax man and you work for the capitalist class, even if you think that you work for yourself. At the end of the day, no, you don't. You don't own anything. You're not allowed to really own anything in this country. Everything is taxed, and if you don't pay those taxes, the government will use its mandated monopoly on force to re remove it from your uh, from your um, personal collection. Truth of the matter is, is that you are still very much a slave, um, economically speaking, and if you happen to commit any of those infractions, tax or otherwise, um, per the 13th Amendment, you will be legally a slave. So, no, boo-boo, you're not. So, that number isn't for people who died because of a vaccine. Boo boo, let me teach you how to read here. <clears throat> this is reports of death after COVID 19 vaccination, which means breakthrough infection. So, 0.0020% of the population vaccinated has managed to have a breakthrough infection. Do you understand how incredibly good that number is? And the fact of the matter is, is very few of those people are actually healthy individuals to start with. They're usually asthmatic, overweight, or have a host of core morbid uh, morbidities such as heart disease and or cancer and or autoimmune issues. God, you're dumb. Donkey, thank you for the follow. Yes, it's point zero zero two zero percent. Excuses, excuses. Yes. Um, 
No. It's just being able to be read to read. Um, donkey, real men do not wear skirts. You're right. Um, Alexander the Great was not a real man. The pharaohs of Egypt were not real men. The emperors of China, not real men. The uh, uh, Roman legions, not real men. The uh, Spartans, not real men. The Celtic warriors, not real men. The Vikings, not real men. You're right. Real men have never worn skirts and do not wear skirts. You're right. What's, you know, all of human history combined compared to what your dumb statement said. Ah. Uh. Yeah, you kind of did. Thanks for taking the bait, though. It's always fun when it happens. Um, hey, Maddie, define fascist for me, please. Oh, yeah, no. Um, oh, you know what? Let's do this. Hey, Maddie, do you want some tape for your ankle? I, I, I don't, I just don't want you to blow your ankle out when you pivot that hard. So do you want to wrap, do you want to, do you want to tape your ankle first? Uh, skirt, actually, Maddie. Skirt. A dress is a full piece. Uh, closer to a tobe, if you know what a tobe is. But you don't know what a dress or a skirt are either. So I don't expect you to know what a tobe is. Um, but a dress is a, a single piece that extends from the upper body down to the lower body and ends in a skirt-like fashion. A skirt begins at the waist and ends in a skirt-like fashion, a single uniform piece that goes around both legs, not extending between them. And you don't have to be a man or a woman to know this stuff. You just have to have been paying attention for, I don't know, half a second of your life. Nice, Joe. <laughs> You're not married. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> mm. Um. Yeah. I have pants. I have boots. I have all of that, too. But skirts are comfortable. And they're fun. You get to go spinny. And the fact that you deny yourself that just because you're all caught up in what is or isn't a man is sad. It's pathetic, man. You let somebody else define your masculinity for you. That's beta shit. You know what you know what alphas do, Maddie? They they go their own way. They make their own rules. They decide what they want to do. Society and other people's opinions be damned. This is what pioneers do. This is what innovators do. This is what real men and women of courage do. You, you're a sad conformist sheep. You take the dictates of toxic masculinity and you internalize them. And then you project them outwardly because you're insecure about your own masculinity. It's sad, really, at the end of the day. But 
I don't even pity you. Because I don't care about you. So, whatever. Uh, yeah, Bidouin, yes, the conformity is strong with that one. Mm hmm Uh, so everybody knows Fred Blassey here, or Blasey, uh, their favorite author is Ayn Rand. Just just to contextualize anything Fred says, um, their, their favorite author is Ayn Rand. Out of, out of all of the, 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 the plethora, the, the global library, the countless generations of authors that have come before us and live beside us contemporarily. Fred has decided to state unequivocally that Ayn Rand, a mediocre author at best, forget her policies, forget her, her politics, forget her poorly forged Austrian-based economic ideals, just her word smithery alone has decided that Ayn Rand, the anti-socialization of costs, the libertarian neo-feudalist writ large who died on welfare and social security, is their favorite author. In a world where Douglas Adams, Neil Stevenson, Shakespeare, Dickinson, Tolstoy, Arthur C. Clarke, so many great authors, so many great authors, David Foster Wallace, Homer, Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand is their choice. Samuel Clemens, Philip K. Dick, Ein fucking Rand. So, take that into account whenever Fred opens his mouth. Every time he says something, just know, this is one of the dumbest fuckers ever. Bukowski, yes, Joe. <laughs> Patronum. <laughs> Don't forget Mark Twain. Eric Blair. Um, Bidouin. That's very well written, Bidouin. Uh, unlike Ayn Rand, um, Ayn Rand has a confused ontology, a non-existent epistemology, a perverse axiology, and reading her is to intentionally scramble one's cognition. Um, uh, Patriot Orwell is Eric Blair. I already said his name. George Orwell is the pen name, or uh, to a gentleman by the name, actual name of Eric Blair. I I generally refer to Orwell by his real name. My one philosophy teacher in uni was an objectivist, and he never failed to bring it, bring it up at least once per class. Oh, God. Just to throw a name uh, nobody ever reads, Alfredo Calido. Um... Yeah. Yeah, no one knows Eric Blair is George Orwell. It's quite why I quite enjoy doing it to people, quite frankly. <laughs> um, yeah. Aldous. If I have to mention Eric, I need to mention Aldous. Um, but, yes. So, I think we've driven off Fred. Maybe not. Maybe Fred's still here after being admonished so thoroughly. 
maybe Fred has just chosen to be silent. Um, but I think we may have driven Fred off. Um, yes. Ayn Rand, of all things. Imagine. Uh, Gemma. Yeah, I wish I were on a beach right now. I wish I were on a beach. It's one of it's one of my my quintessential beach shirts. Yeah. I wish I were I wish I were in um I wish I were in Puerto Rico right now. On the beach in in San Juan, right by my favorite taco shop. I can see I can see the I can see the stand. I know the path. I can I can walk the path right down to the beach. I know, oh man, I'd take an Uber up to this amazing barbacoa restaurant. They fucking, they smoke all of their meats in house over like wood slats, like as is tradition in the Caribbean. And they have, oh, their bartender was amazing the last time I was in. I walked in and I was having such a, a rough time because my, my Airbnb was just shit and it was filled with chemicals and crap and they were repainting and I had to change places at the last minute. And I walked in, I was just fucking, I was having it and I walked in and she just took one look at me and she goes, you need a sangria, which is my drink. I drink sangria, like she read me. She straight read me. She puts up two fucking sangrias, one white, one red. And she, and she just fucking slides them to me. She's like, don't worry about it, it's on the house. And I thought I would have fucking paid for him either way. I tipped well. Um, and, you know, fucking sit down and fucking start sipping and just, oh, thank God. She's like, what do you have? I had a whole smoked chicken. Um, and uh, I just got, I got um, some fucking like islands, uh, island dish slaw and a whole smoked chicken to go. And I took it back to my new place right on the beach, like right on the beach and fucking sat on the patio overlooking the ocean and just ate a whole fucking smoked chicken. <laughs> it got drunk and passed out to the sound of crashing of waves. <sighs> Let me see if I can't here. Hang on. Give me a second and I'll, I can show you. I usually have those photos I keep nearby. <laughs> Anytime I'm down there, <laughs> those photos are nearby. Um, all right. Let me get them, get them moved around and put places. Um, oh, God damn it. There we go. Um, working. There's that one. And you need to see out from it. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that's when I was out on the boat. That's not the one I want. Um, that's all video. You know what? Just close that. Um, that'll work. I'll have I'll have a couple of photos here for you in a second. <sighs> All right.
so this is the top of the residence. Now, basically what's going to happen is we're going to turn around. We're going to go over to the edge and we're going to look down. Now the camera shot is in a ways. This is what I would have gone to the gone to sleep to the sound of. This was the beach right behind the house. I could walk down the steps and walk out to this. Yeah. That's where I got drunk and ate my chicken. And this is where last time I was there. This is in San Juan in Puerto Rico. This is where, how terrible for you, just awful. Yes. I, this is where I prefer to be. When I spend time away, this is where I spend time away. Um, it's one of my favorite places. Uh, it's more about the Jones Act than America in to in totality, Marcus. It honestly is more about the legacy of the Spanish uh, ownership in combination with the Jones Act and how we attempted to curb Spanish and uh, uh, communist influence in the region the, than America as a totality. Um, if you talk to, I mean, it depends which generation of Puerto Ricans you talk to down there, but a lot of them are just normally pissed about the Jones Act more than anything else. Like if you, if you talk to the ones in the know, the sailors, um, cause I spent uh, time on a sailboat as well down there. Um, and if you talk to the sailors, they all, they all complain about the Jones Act more than anything else. They, 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 they fuck statehood, fuck America, fuck whatever. They just need the Jones Act to go away. The long and short of it is that basically everything has to come from the mainland. Um, so like a, a shipping container ship will pass right by Puerto Rico and go to Florida, dock, offload, reload, and then come to um, Puerto Rico. And it drives the price up for everything, for everything. It's, it's absolutely insane. Like they can't receive direct shipments because of the Jones Act. And so, yeah, if you talk to sailors, they, they will complain mostly about um, the Jones Act more than anything else. Uh, Mossy, uh, I was just reminiscing about preferring to be on a beach in Puerto Rico right now. Um, it is economically fucked. It is. Um, this is also why we love the, uh, the Caribbean. Um, yeah. Um, Dominique or Dominica, um, not the Dominican Republic, Dominique or Dominica, um, is probably my sec it is, it, it, it goes back and forth. Puerto Rico is an island of convenience. Um, but Dominique is untouched it's unspoiled it's a nature preserve for all intents and purposes it's the only one in the entire caribbean all of the other ones were colonized or turned into plantations or over farmed in what some way shape or form and dominique um wasn't and so like you know puerto rico is an island of convenience for me but dominique is perfect they're terribly homophobic. They have parliamentary policies. They've got a whole bunch of ties to the Commonwealth. Things get a little goofy there sometimes. Um, so it, Q U E, um, weather. Um, but yeah, 
I, I quite enjoy the Caribbean. It's a wonderful place. How dare you introduce nuance into my anti-American take you capitalist pig. I know, right? Who'd have thought there's room for nuance in this world? Um, I mean, Bidouin, we could rewrite that part. And just put that into something else, right? Like, it's a value. I, I, I see the value in that, but I mean, yeah, like, keep it. Keep that part, but the rest of it needs to go away. Um, I mean, um, yeah. Tacos were amazing. The um, the family, the girls that ran the uh, the taco stand right by the beach, close enough to the beach, walking distance. They, uh, I walk up and she just perfect American accent, like straight up. I was like, "Where are you from?" She's like, "Oh, California." I'm like, really? She's like, "Yeah, we're all from California." She's like, "You know, we're we're actually Mexican." <laughs> She's like, but we, you know, we speak Spanish, so we come down here. My parents moved down here years ago, and every summer or any opportunity that I get, like if I'm off from school or they need help, I just fly in. And I'm like, that's fucking brilliant. Your parents were thinkers. Your parents were fucking thinkers. We could hang out in California, California, Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico. No, it's fuck it. We speak Spanish. Let's go to Puerto Rico. Let's go to the Caribbean. Like if we're going to settle anywhere in America, fucking Puerto Rico is a good place to do it. Um, yeah, and their daughters all, like, they all went to school in California, UCLA, um, UC school system. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was you know, I, I, I quite enjoy it down there. I've spent a fair amount of time um, in that part of the world, and I really like it. It's, it's, it's a lovely place. Um Head up, head up the island from San Juan into the into the jungles, basically. I mean, you know, but head up to Arecibo, where the the infamously the radio te uh, telemetry, the radio telescope was. Um, you know, yeah. If you head over to the northwestern portion of the island, uh, resources and amenities start falling by the wayside. But holy shit, is that some gorgeous, gorgeous area? Um, I'd love to have a house there, but it's so stupid expensive to get anything into that part of the world. Um, <coughs> oh, my mom loves the Caribbean. She took me and my siblings a few years ago. We obviously saw all the touristy spots, but it was beautiful. The water was so clear and I learned I'm scared of fish. Interesting, Malsy. Um, Jim, I need more than a shack. Um, the water was amazing. It was like 78 degrees. I'm not kidding you. I stepped into the water and I was like, holy shit, man. I, it was gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And it, and it stormed just a little bit. Just enough. Well, those afternoon rains. Those afternoon Caribbean rains. Just enough to cleanse the soul. I learned to water ski as a kid in Jamaica. Yeah, I ain't going to Jamaica. That island can go fuck itself for a while. I I ain't getting stabbed. All right, and I ain't hanging out in a sandals fucking resort, right? Like that Jamaica got a problem with gay dudes. Yeah, I I ain't fucking around in Jamaica. That's, that's, I'm a good traveler. I know, I know how to read the room. Like I've, like I've said before, I've walked around alone at night in the barrios of uh, Puerto Rico in San Juan. No problem. No fucking problem. I ain't setting foot on Jamaica. Mm -mm. Um, Yeah. That's a sketchy fucking island sometimes. Good weed, though, from what I hear. I 
if you're a white MILF, Jamaica's the shit. All right. Jamaica could get fucked. People think it's some Bob Marley paradise. I mean, reggae is homophobic as fuck. Like, all that reggaeton fucking reggae lyrics, like, if you do, listen to them. Dude, they're misogynistic. They're homophobic. They're fucking violent as shit. Right? Like, yeah. Like, pay attention to what they're saying. Hey, free market. Yeah, motherfuckers don't listen, apparently. <laughs> Why you're not Chilean? Uh, fucking Argies and Chileans. Constantly at each other, even though you're the same fucking people. It's always hilarious to watch the Chileans and the Argies fight. I found out since the banyo definitely means bathroom. Oh. Yeah, except like I can hang out with Eminem and not get stabbed. I ain't going to Jamaica free market. There's a difference. Um Usually if I'm, usually if I'm, if I'm someplace where I hear Eminem, I'm safe. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have you know that everyone, everybody bullies Chileans for their accursed dialect, not just us. Um. Are you trying to imply people who venerate a 20th century monarch as the second coming of Christ might have problematic takes? Marcus, who would have guessed, right? Yeah, premarital's Argentinian. Premarital's an Argy. Premarital's my favorite Argentinian. check that what are we up to 210 243 all right cool uh, you're making a bird feeder tonight all right uh are you fucking dude that's some like high school shop wood class like wood shop project type shit um what do you uh yeah what do you i've uh, for for any particular set of birds, for any particular reason, why 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 are you knocking out a birdhouse? <laughs> Thought your favorite Argentinian was Evita Perón. Uh, no. <laughs> Don't cry for me. No. Um, I was bored. Fair enough. Fair enough. Just a wild bird outside my window. Why, why is it considered wild? You uh, are, Is it partying all night long? Um, let's see. Uh, let me refresh this page too. See if I ever got that message. I doubt it though. Labor Day weekend. <sighs> really? I mean, I set that session for... God damn it. Hold on. Give me one second. Uh, mm. I think that's it. Yeah, no, that wasn't going to happen today. <laughs> oh, see, Mossy, the birds in Las Vegas are on the same fucked up sleep schedule. It, our, our light pollution in Las Vegas is so significant that it fucks with the circadian rhythm of the birds. I'm not kidding you. We have birds that just all night, just all night. The, the wildlife in this town is actually fucked up by the amount of activity and light pollution in this, in this city. Yeah.
I just watched um I just watched one of the uh, the reboot Zorro movies the other day, Angie, Antonio Banderas. Um <laughs> I hate birds. I hate crickets and birds. I'm sorry. They drive me up a wall. As somebody who sleeps through the day, um noisy fucking creatures, they they get to me. Yeah. Birds birds and fucking crickets. I hate light pollution. It's ultimately what drove me out of Chicago. <laughs> Where'd you end up, Bidouin? Um, If you don't mind me asking. He used to be Angie. Not so much. I mean... Marcus, maybe I'll be rid of them one day. Um, no, they're little fucking survivors. Are you kidding me? <sighs> oh, um, it, you said that uh, the light pollution drove you out of Chicago. Where'd you end up? You don't have to tell me like this specific, but like, still, are you still in Illinois? You just in rural Illinois now, or did you fuck off somewhere? Spe like, really? Like, I went to Alaska. <laughs> you know, Wait, where'd you end up, better one? Um, I mean, nation states and borders are cringe. Yes, they're also counterproductive. They're um, they inhibit uh, economic activity. That is a fucking jump, Bedouin. That is a fucking jump. I respect it too, by the way. That's that's a fucking hell of a jump. I wish I were wish I were there with you. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, cause fuck this place. But yeah, F F San Fran, mm, pass. Um, no, you're back in Massachusetts. Oh, man. Um, I'm from Vermont originally, so I'm familiar with that part of the world. I grew up in New England. Hey, public. Uh, it's been a weird fucking stream so far, so far, public. We'll see if it kicks off again, but holy shit, we had a string of weirdos. Um, welcome. Um, but it, it is a, it is a... We're attempting a chill Friday stream. Um, chuds. Closer to chuds than no bots. Um, <laughs> um, oh, Pat Patronum. I have, dude, there's so many fucking people who fucked that up. It, it is, that, I've legitimately had that happen. I've legitimately, uh, had that happen. Hello, Bushcraft. Um, yeah, it's like, where are you from originally? Oh, New England. Uh, congratulations, I guess. You survived, Bushcraft. Um... Fucking swamp, but I, you're, I, I presume bushcraft. Are you fucking swamp? Um, you an improved England. Um, what? Um, good congratulations on surviving, though. No, okay, then you're not. Sorry, bushcraft. Um, uh, congratulations on surviving. Um, what happened? Where was it? Should I? Uh. Mm, Headlines, headlines, you got any news reports? Hey Zippy. Oh public, it happens all the time. Go, 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 
Marcus, yeah, um, yeah, some of those, some of those New England accents carry over a lot of, uh, vocal markers from the continent, yeah, from the UK and, and the continent to be certain, uh, certain, um, Uh, congratulations, Joe. Um, we just deep fire food, instant flavor, and heart attacks. Um, well, good on you, Bushcraft. Um, yeah, Gemma, dude. There's so many people that, honestly, I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. That like years and years and years ago, I was in Tennessee. And somebody asked where I was from, and I said New England. They're like, oh, wow, I've never heard an accent like that before. It's like, Jesus Christ. I just, I, I, I just can't with some people sometimes. It's like, how, how do you fuckers not know? How do you fuckers not know about that we refer to this corner of the country as New England? Um... Um, all right, so let's see. I have, oh, we did that one. Mm, we did that one. Um, oh, here's a, here's a, here's a fun, weird one. Um, the, uh, the federal, uh, uh the, uh, the federal trade Commi uh, commission, uh, is investigating McDonald's. And why their ice cream machines are always broken. Like the FTC is actually investigating why McDonald's fucking ice cream machines are never working. I, I, I just... Like, dude. <laughs> fucking weirdo. Public, I never ate McDonald's ice cream. Like, that's not a thing I did. Mm. But I'm aware of the meme. Um, yeah. Fra uh, <laughs> Frakes and fra 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 Shakes and fries. Yeah, I, I never, I, I, I don't do McDonald's at all. Like, if I ate McDonald's now, it would kill me. Like, I, I truly believe that. Like, I would be ill. I would be fucked if I ate McDonald's now. Yeah. I, I mean, their burgers are shit, right? I'm on the West Coast, in and out. If you were going to do a burger, which, again, I don't eat out, but if you're going to do a burger, in and out du uh, uh, double double animal style and animal style fries, for sure. It's the way to go. The gay man doesn't eat out. Imagine my surprise. And I'm a bottom. <laughs> it doesn't usually my. It's not my uh, <clears throat> avenue of attack. Um. Just try one in the waiting room of the hospital. Tell the front desk lady. Um. Ugh, White White Castle can be good, but not. That's hit and miss. That's hit and miss. Um. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, video games. Video games. Yeah. Um, for kids. Uh, under. Like, uh, you know, uh, three hours during the weekend or something like that. Yeah. They also are coming down on sissy celebrities. 
effeminized males. They think it's counter it's counterproductive to their renaissance. Wither. Yeah, fuck if I know. It was a good movie, actually. Harold and, Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle was the sort of rebirth of um, fucking Doogie Hauser's. Yes, I know his name, but he's he will always be Doogie Hauser. Um, Doogie Hauser's fucking um, career rebirth. Him fucking rolling on ecstasy hard with fucking strippers and shit. Dude. Yeah, that was, that was like, people were like, holy shit, NPH is fucked up. And yeah, that was really good for his career. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, NBH is a, is a is like classically trained song and dance man at this point. Yeah. Hmm. You know what? I do want to watch this video. This video is funny. Um. Good old Tennessee accent. I think it's okay to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about like, is this gonna, no, we're fine. Senator Rand Paul says that the medical community won't study ivermectin objectively because of their hatred for Trump. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. I'm sure that's the reason. And it's not because as the medical community in the middle of the pandemic, they kind of have their hands full studying things that aren't rock chewing stupid. In the middle of a the pandemic, they, <laughs> they got their hands full that aren't rock chewing stupid. This is, this is where my accent comes from. This is, this is the southern accent I do. This is a Tennessee accent. This is just this is deep Tennessee. At the moment, at the yeah, moment, I think the medical community ever anticipated they would need to devote time and energy toward explaining to y'all that you probably shouldn't treat COVID with livestock dewormer. They didn't know things would get quite so barnyardy out this motherfucker, but here we are. It blows my mind that so many people in this country can apparently see a Facebook post from a bricklayer they know claiming that horse drugs are the miracle breakthrough COVID cure and think to themselves, this is what every doctor in the world has missed right here. Hey, honey, get in here, check it out. Rebar Randy solved the pandemic. Look, well, think about it. When's the last time you saw a horse with Rona, huh? Hardly not, never. Oh, man, wait till all these liberal sheep find out we're drinking farm animal juice. They're going to feel pretty stupid. There's apparently a human version of it, but these people are just going to the co-op because in America, we get our medical treatment at the same place we get our hand warmers and deer corn, God damn it! And so they're getting the horse version. You may have noticed horses are bigger and pretty different from people. And I know you're thinking, I didn't know Trey went to horse college, but it's true. So these people are getting sick, having to call poison control, getting diarrhea all over the place, and still they are undeterred getting back on Facebook like, hey, so, uh, so I took a whole tube of horse paste and a bunch of belly stuff fell out my butt at tractor supplies. Is that supposed to happen? Or Also, I'm coughing a lot, man. Pooping their pants to own the libs. Welcome to the revolution, everybody. Honestly, I wouldn't even care if not for the fact that these people will end up straining our already strained medical infrastructure even further with their idiocy. So here's how I think it should work. Let them take horse pills. It's fine. But if you shun the vaccine and take horse pills instead, when you invariably start to cough to death, you don't get a hospital bed. You get a box in a stable. They lay you on some hay, throw a blanket over you, see how it goes. And if after a couple of days you're not getting any better, the person closest to you comes out there with a tear in their eye and shoots you in the head. I don't make the horse rolls, okay? I'm just saying we need a compromise here. Oh, existence is a nightmare. Love y'all. <laughs> just love that end ah existence is a nightmare <laughs> it just so casually drops that fucking line on you ah existence is a nightmare uh he is a pretty funny feller 
Yes, yeah, sir. Um, yeah, that's that is where my southern accent comes from is Tennessee. That's that's where it is derived from. Mine's a little further northeast Tennessee. His is pretty much uh, mid country. Um, it's pretty h hardcore rural, but yeah. <laughs> That's the southern version of ZJ. I, I hate life. Ah, uh, uh, existence is a nightmare. Scary. Yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, I, I have a bit of a twang from time to time, and I, I do slip into a southern accent if I get really angry. It's fucking weird as shit when it happens, but it happens. I spent years in Tennessee. And you can hear it in some of my inflections. Now that you've been listening to that accent, and the, which is so pronounced, you can begin to hear some of the slightly tonal inflections in my pronunciations that are kind of Southern. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've long lost my Vermonters accent. I have no vestiges of my Vermont accent any longer, um, but I got some of that Tennessee in me still. <laughs> Existence is a nightmare. Um, <laughs> Primero, we might not even need a sound clip. I could just fucking do it. Um, fuck it. Mine comes out when I'm excited. It's truly embarrassing. Like, record skips and everyone looks at me embarrassing. Uh... <laughs> Montpellier. Montpellier. America's Frontline Doctors, AFLD, a group that have been following on social media promoting ivermectin. Uh, paid the group $90 for a telemedicine appointment. Week later, waiting for the consultation, not even apologize, an apology. So they were just scamming them, like straight up just scamming them. Nice. You guys, got, you guys get southern accents. How did I end up with an Irish one? Never even been to Ireland yet. Uh, Mossy. I mean, if you're a New Englander, there's definitely a potential to end up with an Irish accent. Um, yeah. Or at least some tonality. I mean, that Boston um, non-rhotic R's is straight up out of the UK. I mean, you got to... Um, are we going to go to the bar tonight? We got to park the car down over the, uh, over the yard. Like, right, like, I'm. it's not my best accent, but, I mean, that non rhotic R from that part of the world definitely has that sort of British ah uh, to it. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina, but gr grew up on Jack Skeptic-Eye. Okay. Um, yeah. See, I, it, the only accent I can hold proper is the Tennessee accent. I can just hold it. Like I can just, I can, uh, y'all, I can be doing that Tennessee accent the rest of this stream. It is, it, it is just built in. Tennessee, I gotta even do that Southern draw to it and get the good old proper Tennessee. Oh, you're from Vermont? Oh, Vermont's amazing. They got all them green mountains up there. You ski? You got one of them fruity boot skis things you all do up in there, those parts? Yeah, down these parts, we ain't known so much into skiing. Right, I can just, I can just hold that. Um, yeah, Angie, sorry. Like, I, I can't, I can't hold a Boston accent. I can't do a Boston accent for shit for any amount of time. Um, but a Tennessee accent, I can fucking nail. Um. So 
to see it really book in yeah. Um Hey Puka. Right now we're just talking about accents. Just because of the video we just watched though. <laughs> I see. I'm just thinking about it. Because nobody, nobody thought I'd get so barnyard up in here, but you know, that's how we do. We get a. <laughs> We get our we get our horse pills from the local co-op. Just like we get our, it's like Jesus Christ, man. Fucking dummies. I was taught line dancing in school. Uh, square dancing, not line dancing. I was taught square dancing in school in Tennessee. I'm not kidding. It was part of physical education, part of PE. They taught us how to fucking square dance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's shale. Like, I, the first thing that popped in my head, uh, Rev, was, uh, was like, shale. Oh, yeah, that over there, that's shale. Sh sh shell? Is it shell? Yeah, shale. Are, are you saying shale or shell? Shale. Okay, I don't know which one you're saying. <laughs> yeah, fucking black. Um... And then the good old-fashioned Earl. Well, you just need to put some Earl on it. And stop, it'll stop squeaking for you. Yeah, you get rid of that squeak in no time. You just Earl it up. Oil. Oil, by the way. If you were confused by what the fuck Earl is, it's oil. Earl. Yes, refs. Shale, like slate. Yeah. You just gotta earl it up. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to make sure you don't earl up your your roof. You up there on the roof, you slide off. It's all earl up. Yeah. Yeah. URL like the internet. Earl. Yeah, Gemma. That's that's yeah. Oil becomes earl. It's fucking weird as shit. There's there's some very odd. Um, here's one for you. Um, area. Yeah yeah yeah. Over the over there you gotta that area over there you gotta earl up. Area becomes area. Yeah. It, it, there's there's a bunch of those that you're like what the fuck. And, Uh, I've heard it, uh, like, oh, um, I have heard oh as well, right? Like, yeah, oil, uh, old, but no, duh, oh, oh, yeah, I've heard that one as well sometimes, uh, around here, oil is all, oh, uh, oh, yeah. What does you, does, what does urea become? Um. <laughs> in Texas, zero zero is double hot. Um, most of the South. Oh yeah, yo yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Fucking Arab. Yeah, for sure. Lur. Fuck, you gotta put a lure on that shit. Yeah. See, you need one of the spinning lures. Um, our chorus teacher always made sure we over enunciated our D's and T's. Yes, that is, that is one thing that vocal training and stage training gave me was enunciation. Um, I may from time to time still have a bit of a, a draw on me, um, but my, I, I, I tend to enunciate correctly. My, pr my pronunciation and my enunciation are that of somebody who has had theater training, for sure. You can tell. Chapatulis. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Bitterwood. Yeah, it's A Rab. That's that's A Rab. For sure. So do I get my five points, Cassie? Um uh, there's a town near me called A C O R N. A Kern? Yeah. Um Yeah, I, I, I love the southern pronunciations. <laughs> Crane. Crane? You got that you got a box of crayons? Yeah, because it, if if you aren't familiar with southern pronunciations, uh, all right, you're you're pulling your tongue back, and you're basically pressing up to the top of your palate with a lot of it. There's a lot of tension in this part of the mouth, and so, area, 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 right? You gotta hurry, and you gotta loosen it up a little bit to, you know, hit the notes as you go along. But there is, there's a lot of back tension in the uh, in the tongue, and you're pressing to the the back top of the palate a lot. So yeah, that's that's where a lot of those pronunciations actually are derived from. You got hurry. Um, here we go. That's that done. Don't know what it was about, but it's done. Um, All right, so anyway, now that I can scroll back. Um, heard one says splayed feet indicated lack of self-esteem and actors are trying to keep their feet straight. Do you know anything about that? I've never heard that one in particular, Rev, um, but it, splayed feet tends to be do, do attention. It, it, you're, you're tensed. You're tensed. Um, so relaxed. Um, the big one... Um, is i'll just i'll demonstrate this is the big one um most most beginning um okay so this is this you can just watch this right community theater um fucking like shitty rom-coms watch their hands Inexperienced actors don't know what to do with their hands. And they get very self-conscious about it very quickly. It's one of those things that gets into their heads. And so as my uh, my repertoire company teacher used to yell at people, um, stop, uh, you look like you gotta go to the bathroom. Do you, why are you doing the pee-pee dance? Stop doing the pee-pee dance, right? Like stop, stop, S stop covering your crotch like that stand like a normal human being please all right it's a good easy way to notice that somebody's uncomfortable on stage is they they keep covering their crotch and then the hands can sort of go back to their sides and then they cover their crotch again and they start they don't they don't know what to do with their arms and hands it feels very unnatural for uh, for people uh when they stand when they're standing on stage yeah um Mossy, yeah, it was hard for me to keep my hands still when I first started, and it's still difficult to be honest. Um, <laughs> yep, like Will Ferrell and Talia Day at Nights. I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, yeah, it, it is. It's actually a thing. Um, the other one that drives me personally, this is, this is a uh, monkey, uh, uh, Zippy. The next time you're just standing around, this is okay. So this is gonna pop into your head. The next time you're just standing talking to a friend or you're having a conversation in public, uh, Zippy. I want you to remember, just just hear my voice. 
What were you doing with your hands at that moment? No, take note of that. That's what you do with your hands. Um, the one that drives me up a wall is the fake run on. Um, so basically, <laughs> my hand does the Loch Ness kind of do that on stage. Actually, interestingly enough, it does. If it doesn't detract from the scene, yeah. There's all sorts of interesting tics and behavior patterns and body language that actors use that can be unique unto themselves that as long as it doesn't detract from the scene, you're fine, just do it. Um, the fake run on is the one that drives me up a wall. Um, so basically it, you're supposed to like run into the scene, right? But you are just standing just off stage or just off camera. And as a result of that, you launch and you can see the you can sort of see the beginning of the movement right drives me up a wall every time i see it in film and film and stage is because all you have to do is take like five steps back just just back up a little back back up from the edge of the camera back up from the edge of the stage and get your run on started that way when you come on stage or you run by camera, you run into frame, you're actually in pace. Drives me crazy every time I see it. Yeah, that one. I mean, Gemma, maybe, but I mean, fuck it. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, you all want to talk about fucking politics? I, 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 t I like to be fluid with it. Do I have anything? Oh, that was a good one. Actually, um, I do have one headline I still wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, so... There is there is one headline um, that I didn't get to. That is like we can we can stay in politics with this, Gemma. Um, so Beverly Hills had a safe street task force that they set up called the Rodeo Drive Task Force. It was set up last year to, in response to, quote, a significant increase in calls for service in our business community. It's one of the richest municipalities in the country, right? They arrested 106 people last year. 105 were black and one was a dark-skinned Latino person. That's it. Of 106 people arrested, 105 were black and one was a dark-skinned Latino. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Just straight up racist. Um, they, they, uh, a civil rights uh, attorney has filed suit against the police department. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Um, they, they filed a class action. Uh, on behalf of a couple uh, who was on vacation in Beverly Hills last September. They were riding a scooter down the street when police detained them. <laughs> no probable cause, no reasonable suspicion. <laughs> they demanded their IDs. They ran their names through, uh, for, through NCIC. Um, they, uh, the couple, quote, Peace of, uh, peacefully objected to the officers abusing their police powers and were subsequently handcuffed and arrested on multiple fabricated charges. <laughs> um, 
the uh, vice president of men's footwear at Versace, uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Sally uh, Bembury. Um, <laughs> he's the vice president of men's footwear at Versace, was holding a Versace bag. Um, officers followed him and stopped him for jaywalking. Um, with one saying, how come you did that? You didn't want to wait for the light? They immediately asked him for ID, started, uh, started patting him down, asking him if he had weapons. Um, <laughs> the man literally responded to the cops by saying, <clears throat> what's unfortunate is I literally designed the shoes that were in this bag and I'm being searched. After making uh, repeatedly clear that he was complying, uh, but the officers were beginning to make him nervous, he got out his phone to record, and one am uh, officer tried to discourage him from filming by saying, right now, now you're being detained. Um, they, later had, they later released him after, as he uploaded the footage to Instagram. <laughs> uh one driver another incident from the from the lawsuit um um they a uh, black uh, black driver and a black passenger stopped him without cause eventually letting them go but this is at the behest of the uh, the, the police department and captain by the name of Scott Dowling who led this this task force, quote, directed his subordinates to seize, interrogate, use force, falsely arrest, and maliciously prosecute any African Americans who traveled on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. Um, <laughs> they, are, they harassed and arrest, falsely arrested a nurse who was just driving through. Um... <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I just one case after another after another out of this lawsuit. Um, but, but 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 officers are the only ones who are allowed to be nervous. Yeah, we do actually. We need some. We need some more streaming, like instant upload. The ACLU has an app for that. It doesn't do like instant upload, but there is an ACLU app for um, uploading to a secured store for future potential use in lawsuits against police departments. So there is, if you want to look, there's an ACLU app. There used to be a better one that wasn't the ACLU, but one that I forget what it was called, but you could stream to it and it was like instantly like you could set it to be password protected and you could also set it to like instantly go public. And so you could stream to it and it would automatic if it, you like lost connection or lost the stream, it would automatically store whatever you were streaming into an archive as well as publish it for you. Um, so, you know, yeah, there used to be a better one, but it shut down. I don't I don't know why. Um, Um, no, no, I haven't read Malcolm Gladwell's, uh, Speaking to Strangers. Um. I'm from Northern Ireland. Our identity is still based on religion. Yeah, yeah, but Ireland is, qu uh, quickly, um, departing from its, its, uh, religiosity. Um, with every new, like, maternal house and fucking like a uh, cemetery filled with babies that y'all find uh, comes a new wave of, you know what? Fuck it. I'm an atheist now. Um, so yeah, your guys' rates are dropping. Um, some Sometimes quicker than any other place in the world. Um, but yeah, I, I get that. Actually, um... I was thinking about reading some Chomsky this weekend. I've got a couple. I got, um, oh, fuck. 
Yeah, wonder how many mass graves that's related to. Um, it's actually both a little bit, Gemma. Um, it's it takes less effect in Northern Ireland, but it actually does uh, affect the whole of the territory. Um, yeah, I was thinking about reading some Understanding Power. Um, what block am I up to? 22.7 out of 2.43. Cool. Um, well, not necessarily for stream. Um, I mean, we could, but I was just going to read some for myself this weekend. <laughs> um, I could also tr uh, try and really get me in trouble with the, the lefties. Do I have, where is that? Yes, it is. This is the definition of spicy for lefties. This is this is um, a, his, a professor of history um, out of Ohio State who is one of the only ones who have who has ever attempted to put numbers to this these events. Yeah, this is not a topic anybody likes to talk about. The fact that, yeah, uh, the Islamic regimes and Barbary pirates were enslaving Europeans in mass for hundreds of years, and that the numbers are comparable to the Atlantic chattel slave trade. It, it, is, it is an uncomfortable topic for a lot of people. They feel, I, I, I guess, it, it's not been hush-hush for thousands of years. It's literally 1,500 to 1,800. <laughs> Basic math. The Barbary Wars were from the 15 to the 1,800s. Um, I think people feel like it's, that the pushback usually happens I guess with like they feel like it's the counter argument to like oh well it doesn't matter because it happened to us too rather than the look it's not it isn't just white people human beings are shit every single one of us has the capacity to be the demonic or angelic archetypal version of ourselves that's within every single one of us. And to recognize that it's not just one group perpetrating the evil, but human beings as a whole seems to undermine some narratives and when you start talking about that stuff people get very touchy and i understand it but i also just dis i despise lack of nuance and it happened It happened. It will continue to happen. And I also see it as a subtle form of blatant racism towards other groups, towards North Africans, towards Africans, towards Asians, towards Han Chinese, towards the Mongols, towards all of these other ethnic groups and various nationalities and categorically identifiable groups throughout history 
it's a subtle, insidious form of racism, of otherism, of sectarianism, of chauvinism, to say that you're not capable of it, because that is dehumanizing. We as a species, as a people, are capable of the breadth of human capacity. Great altruism and horrific torture of our fellow humans. But that's what makes us, that's what is, it is to be human, is to have the capacity for those, amongst other things, of course. And to deny one, to say that this group X or Y is solely responsible or not capable of being responsible, reduces them, it dehumanizes them. And that's just as bad, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, Gemma, the truth of the matter is, is that we bought most of them. Most of the time, we weren't rounding them up. We bought them. Which is not an absolution. It is not to make it any less horrific, but it also paints a bigger picture. And it forms a more complete form of what it means to be human. If you remove that nuanced element, then what happens is, is you begin to create a stereotype, a caricature, a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional entity. And it's stuff like this that are uncomfortable truths for some on the left. That, yes, the North Africans were just as capable of enslaving Europeans as the other way around. The Europeans just turned it into a commodity form. They turned it into an enterprise. They had the global reach. They had the empire and they had the demand. But if tables were turned, chances are it would be just the same. Because this is what human beings are capable of. I, I, yeah. When this came across my, uh, <clears throat> my radar, I snatched it up. I was like, oh, that needs to go into the uh, collection. It starts with lists of figures and tables with currency conversions for the various areas and exemplary prices so you know what a purchase would be comparable to. Like, you know, that, you know, this is how much the Romans would pay per slave. This is like what, a, you know, what a priest's required labor per month would pay. This is how much uh, the Algerians were ransoming slaves for in batches. This is, you know, what uh, a master carpenter in Venice would earn per day. So, I mean, literally there's, there's pages of uh, exemplary prices so you can contextualize what the value of batches or individuals of slaves in the, dis the context of this discussion were, were comparable to. Um, he, he did his work. Admittedly, uh, from what I understand, the difference between the Barbary slave trade and the Atlantic slave trade, good night, Mossy. Um, sleep well, um, especially in this, in this particular avenue or instance, is that they didn't keep such extensive records. It's, he had to reconstruct a lot of data that for the Atlantic slave trade just exists. They, they kept exempt, they kept just exemplary fucking 
books. They tracked. Um, the Barbary slave trade did not do that to the significant extent that the Atlantic slave trade did. And so Davis had to go to a lot of effort to reconstruct the data sets um, using all sorts of historical records and a variety of sources and methodologies and data models. Um, so there is argument to be made that his numbers are rough estimations. And that is true because again, you will never get anything but a rough estimation. It, it, the data just doesn't exist. So he, um, he did, he had to reconstruct a lot of it. Um, but we are talking millions. It's not insignificant numbers of peoples. You know, it's, it's like that, like, you know, what does it take? And he tried to figure out replacement value, how many it would take to keep this ec economic system of, you know, how, to what degree was an economic system at the time or in, in a region or in a place utilizing slavery as a fundamental uh, pillar of their economic model? And what would it take replacement value? And so what would be the influx on a yearly basis of new slaves? And those sorts of things. He, he put a lot of fucking work into it. Um, credit where credit's due. Um, and he did use, you know, accurate historical sources as best to as he, as he could. Um, but yeah, it was the systematic enslavement of white, whatever the fuck that means. But it was the systematic enslavement of white Christian Europeans by the, the Muslims in the North African Barbary Coast over hundreds of years to the tune of millions. Um, it was not a minor phenomenon. And it's this kind of nuance that I require in my worldview. Because as I said, I find it dehumanizing to say that the Han Chinese are incapable of this behavior. To say that the African diaspora, the African, you know, plethora of peoples, because it's a continent. When we say African, it's a fucking continent. There are so many ethnic groups. There are so many nations. There are so many contributing groups in the, in the history, not only contemporarily, but the historical analysis of Africa. But to say that Africans are incapable of this behavior, that this is exclusively the, the, the behavior of white supremacy or global white supremacy is reductive and dehumanizing to everybody else. And so, yeah, like it, it's not me searching for some sort of out for white people. It's just me recognizing that humans are going to human. And I want to read somebody who, like, like I said, he's a professor. It's, it's very well sourced. It's very well cited. Um, I mean, just I, like it's, it's very well cited. Um, and you know, it, he, this aspect. And I mean, this is, this is uniquely American. Um, Thomas Jefferson went to war, right? From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. Tripoli, it's the Barbary Wars. Thomas Jefferson deployed the US Navy to deal with this issue because they started taking American sailors and we weren't having none of that shit. We shut that shit down hard and fast. Um, so, you know, yeah, this is, I'm gonna, this is, this is probably my weekend reading. But yes, it would piss a lot of lefties off. <clears throat> it would piss a lot of lefties off. Of course he was a bit of a dick. He's a white slave owning land holding founding father. Of course he was a bit of a dick. Um, comes with the territory. But he was also one of the best political writers of human history. 
one of the best well read. The Library of Congress was donated. The, the foundational texts for the Library of Congress were Jefferson's private library to the tune of between 10 and 11,000 texts in multitudes of languages. I, I, I mean, yeah, he was a hypocrite. He was a fucking racist. He was a rapist. He was a slave owner. Um, but he was a hell of a brain. He was a hell of a writer. He's a hell of a political theorist. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, Rev, I feel you. I feel you on that one. That's funny. That's funny. I like watching numbers drop when I talk about uncomfortable topics for leftists. Seven. Seven. Christian Slaves, Muslim Masters, K-Red, um, by Robert C. Davis. Yeah, I think this is the most extraordinary collection of talent of human knowledge that has ever been gathered together at the White House, with the possible exception of when Thomas Jefferson dined alone. He was not dumb. He was a highly flawed human being. He was a product of his times. He was a product of his culture and his era. Um, he had tons of issues. He was a broken man in many, many ways. He was toxic. He was horrible. He fucking owned a fuck. He raped a fucking young girl that he owned for fuck's sake. But his writings give insight into what's capable, what, what human beings are capable of putting to paper. I refuse to turn my back on that. I go into it with open eyes as to who he was as a man. Ben did. Ben liked the uh, Ben liked the uh, the sex workers. Ben was um, he was he liked the women. For sure. Yeah, Franklin. Um, I forget who walked in on him. Samuel Adams walked in on him in a bathtub with two ladies of the night um, playing chess. Yeah, Ben Franklin was, uh, he was a horn dog. Yep. Franklin was uh, quite the individual as well. Oh, I'm sure he did more than play chess, but he was also playing chess. Which is one of those things. Um, I mean, whether this all comes into no true Scotsman territory. Um, but, I mean, no, yes, depends who you ask. I mean, that would be the modern day sort of thing, Rev. But uh, yeah, we, um, I kind of do want to do that. Give me one sec. Give me one sec.
Thank you for the sub, Anya. I was... On, oh, Jesus, Anya. Thank you. Um... Hey, Aka. So, I mean, a bunch of weird shit. Um, low numbers always dictate weird shit happening, Aka. It's, it's sort of the tradition. If I'm hovering in, like, high 30s, low 40, uh, like, mid 40s, low 50s even, um, then weird shit happens. Weird shit happens. So... How many of you have ever read this? Understanding Power by Noam Chomsky. <laughs> caboose. How's that? <laughs> caboose ADHD goes brr. So, this is basically a collection. Um, it's a collection of his thoughts, speeches, interviews on power. On it's it's almost. This is almost a Foucaultian analysis of power dynamics in America and on a global scale by Chomsky. And It's basically, it's basically the U.S. from Vietnam to the Clinton administration. There is a, a note added for 9-11. Um, this book was published. It was, this book went to print as the towers were being attacked straight up so the context for it is really fascinating when you take that into account um i'm gonna read some of it This is, a dis this is a discussion he had in 1989 in Rowe, Massachusetts. All right, this is, this is the we a weekend teach-in opening session. Yeah, you can't do that, Joe. The book is under copyright. That's TOS. We can't encourage that on stream. You can't do that. Um, as much as I disagree with copyright. Uh, no, it is. Um, I think I'll do, well, there's other ways. 
Um, yeah. Uh, depends. This one, I can't vouch for. I haven't read it yet. This one, yes, it's worth reading. Um, Noam Chomsky is brilliant. Is an anarchist, his, he doesn't do theory, right? I would, if you wanted anarchist theory, I would tell you to read somebody else. But as a person who analyzes language and power structures, he's brilliant. He is one of the most preeminent minds of our era. There's no getting around that. It, it, so when it comes to something like manufacturing consent or uh, analyzing or understanding power, um, yeah. Um, also, if you're a, a language nerd, read some of his, his papers on linguistics and you truly see his brilliance. You're like, holy shit, there hasn't been somebody like this since McLuhan. And if you don't know who McLuhan is, then you're probably not much of a language nerd. Um, but yeah, Chomsky is brilliant. There's no way around that. Um, yes, Rev Marshall McLuhan. Um, and thank you again, Anya. That's three in a row. Um, yeah, I, I, I truly like, yeah, it's, it's worth reading. It's worth reading. I would, if you were going to do non-linguistic reading of, um, Noam Chomsky, start with manufacturing consent. That's where you start. Um, most people read or listen to or watch manufacturing consent. That's your starting place. But understanding power is him talking. This is, this is, holy shit, Marcus. Um, Proxy Echoes, Joey John, Miss Nixa, Pity Party, and DJ Systemic. But thank you, Marcus. Holy crap, five of them in a row. Um, the medium is the message. Yes, Cassidy. Um, this is just him talking. This is him at, at, at sessions and people asking him questions. Right? Like, this is people engaged with Noam Chomsky. And it's a really fascinating insight. <clears throat> Beep. Ah, yes. The five filters of mass media machine. Yep. <clears throat> so. Gnome. This is a woman asking him this. Gnome, I think the reason we've all come out here to spend the weekend talking with you is to get some of your perspectives on the state and the world, uh, the state of the world, and what we can do to change it. I'm wondering, do you think activism has brought about many changes in the USA in the past few decades? Oh, sure. Big changes, actually. I don't think the structure of the institutions has changed, but you can see real changes in the culture and in other ways a lot of uh, in other uh, in a lot of ways in other ways too. For instance, compare two presidential administrations in the 1960s and 1980s, the Kennedy administration and the Reagan administration. Now in a sense they had a lot in common. Anya, thank you. And there you go, Joe. Asking ye shall receive. Um contrary to what everyone says, both came into office on fraudulent denunciations of their predecessors as being wimpish and weak and letting the Russians get ahead of us. Remember Kennedy and Reagan, all right? This, um, there was a fraudulent missile gap in the Kennedy case, a fraudulent window of vulnerability in the Reagan case. Both were characterized by a major escalation of the arms race, which means more in international violence and increased taxpayer subsidies to advance industry at home through military spending. Both were jingoistic. Both tried to whip up fear in the general population through a lot of militarist hysteria and jingoism. Both launched highly aggressive foreign campaigns around the world. Kennedy substantially increased the level of violence in Latin America. The plague of repression that culminated in the 1980s under Reagan was in fact largely a result of his initiatives. 
Of course, the Kennedy administration was different in that, at least rhetorically, <clears throat> and to some extent in practice. It was concerned for social reform at home, where the Reagan administration was committed to the opposite, to eliminating what there was of a social welfare system here. But that probably reflects the difference in international affairs in the two periods beyond, more than anything else. In the early 1960s, hey Buddhist, thank you for the biddies. Um, uh, let's see. In the early 1960s, the United States was the world dominant power and had plenty of opportunity for combining international violence and commitment to military spending with social reform at home. By the 1980s, the same opportunity wasn't around anymore. The United States was just not that powerful and not that rich relative to the industrial rivals. In absolute terms, it was, but not relatively. And there was a general consensus among elites. It wasn't just Reagan that you had to break down the welfare state in order to maintain the profitability and competitiveness of American capital. But that difference apart, the two administrations were very similar. On the other hand, uh, uh, they couldn't do the same things. For example, Kennedy could invade Cuba and launch the world's to date uh, and launch the world's to date major international terrorist operation against them, which went on for years. Probably is still going. He was able to invade South Vietnam, which he did after all. Kennedy sent the American Air Force to bomb and napalm South Viet uh, Vietnam and defoliate the country, and he sent troops to crush the peasant independence movement there. And Vietnam's an area of minor American concern. It's way, on, it's way on the other end of the world. The Reagan administration tried to do similar things, but much closer to home in Central America, and couldn't. As soon as they started moving towards direct intervention in Central America in the first few months of the administration of 1981, they had to back off and move to clandestine operations. Secret arms sales, covert funding through client states, training of terrorist forces like the Contras in Nicaragua, and so on. Right? This is... This is one, two, three paragraphs in, into this book. And it is insight into how the machine of America operates. It is an insight into some of the power dynamics that were occurring at the time. Um, it, it's, this is, and this is just Chomsky off the top of his head when asked a question, right? Like this is just Chomsky replying to somebody who was like, hey, you know, what's up? Um, again, those issues aren't as, as big as people make them out to be, Marcus. I'm not going to defend, but honestly, this is like the Walt Disney is anti-Semitic thing. When you go back and actually read what was written and you read the context surrounding it, it's not, it's not what a lot of people make it out to be. It isn't. So, like, if you want to know more about Chomsky's supposed issues and his genocide apologia... Go read, go read what he actually said in totality and then go read the surrounding context and you might come away with the same opinion that's like, you know, that's not as bad as people say it is. Um, Joe, what, wait, Joe, what are you doing? You can't, oh, uh, well, Joe, you did it. So thank you kindly, Joe. Uh, Tari Silberak, uh, Elk, uh, Boom. Uh, irresol uh, irresolution Illusion, The Sleep Easy, and Googleizer. <clears throat> Thank you, Joe. So we're up to a level four. Oh, no, no, no. We're 26% up to a level four. So we did a level three. Um, we did a level three. Um, and now we're 26% up to a level four of doing a capitalism. My first capitalism on Twitch. First ever. Congratulations, Joe. Um, it's a very striking difference, a dramatic difference. And I think the difference is one of the achievements of the activism and dissidents of the last 25 years. In fact, the Reagan administration was forced to create a major propaganda campaign, the Office of Public Diplomacy. It's not the first one in American history. It's the second. The first was during the Wilson administration in 1917. But this one was much larger, much more extensive. It was a major effort in indoctrinating the public. The Kennedy administration never had to do that because they could trust that the population would be supportive of any form of violence and aggression they decided to carry out. That's a big change, and it's had its effects. There were no B-52s in Central America in the 1980s. It was bad enough. Hundreds of thousands of people were slaughtered. But 
if we'd sent B-52s in the 82nd Airborne, it would have been a lot worse. And that's a reflection of a serious rise in domestic dissonance and activism. Trailhead, thank you for the sub. Um, and that pushes us up to level four hype train, I guess. Is it going to be capitalist biddies for the capitalism? Um, skulls for the uh, blood for the blood gods. Um, yep. Level four complete. Look at that. Um, redacted. We're, we're reading understanding power. Oh, just a, just a little bit of understanding power by, by Chomsky. Um, because I kind of wanted to. Um, yes, uh, Biden is declassifying the, um, uh, the 9-11 attack investigation documents, Anya. He's not opening an investigation, he's declassifying the documents of the investigation. Um, but if we'd sent B-52s in the 82nd Airborne, it would have been a lot worse. And that's a reflection of a serious rise in domestic dissidents and activism in the United States over the past 25 years. Um, the Reagan administration was forced into clandestine tactics rather than direct aggression of the sort that Kennedy was able to use in Vietnam, largely in order to pacify the domestic population. As soon as Reagan indicated that he might try to turn to direct military intervention in Central America, there was a convulsion in the country, ranging from massive flow of letters to demonstrations to church, church groups getting involved. People started coming out of the woodwork all over the place and the administration immediately backed off. Just thank you for the biddies. Within six paragraphs of this book, Chomsky points out that concerted activist effort that uh, over the course of 25 years changed the tactics of the administration of this government. The executive branch who once openly just bombed the shit out of, uh, out of countries and deforested them and just went to town on them, just roughshod, were forced to engage in more surreptitious means. This is your only ray of hope. You can change stuff in this country, but it takes... It takes... 25 years worth of activism, right? To sure, they still went to town on them, but not as bad. So if you want to beat back that Texas abortion ban, it's not going to happen overnight. You're looking at 25 years worth of work. Where we stand right now in this country You've got 40 years worth of work to do. I'm not kidding you. Um, hey, resolution. Yeah, congratulations on the sub. Um, and we don't have 40 years to do it in. So... Take that. No, it isn't, Ms. Uh, rape isn't. Rape and incest both are not considered in the abortion ban. No. Um, <clears throat> in fact, a rapist can hold you at gunpoint and rape you and impregnate you and will have potentially a lesser sentence than the woman who aborts the rape baby. So... Um, yeah, like we have 40 years of work to do and we have 10 years to do it in. Um, 
<clears throat> it's worth giving the second half of that JFK quote I always use. Uh, someone once said that Thomas Jefferson was a gentleman of 32 who could calculate an eclipse, survey an estate, tie an artery, plan an edifice, tie a uh, try a cause, break a horse, and dance the minuet. Yeah, he was quite an interesting human being. Um, I don't know what the future holds. I'm not a fucking predictor. I'm not a data scientist. I'm not Nostradamus. But I think in my heart of hearts, the only way out of this is... Yeah, well, a lot of you're looking at climate change, you're looking at economic factors, you're looking at generational factors. 10 years. We got 10 years to do it in. We got 40 years worth of work to do in 10 years. Honestly. <sighs> this country's too big. It's not that it's too big, it's that we're too disparate. There's too many differing ideologies at this point. The Deep South versus New England versus the Midwest versus the West Coast and Southwest. There's too many disparate cultural ideologies at play. Um, I don't. I don't see a cultural shift of that magnitude happening rapidly what is the what is the middle ground where a west coast quote-unquote liberal uh a, a pacific uh uh sort of like uh portland type right meets a dyed-in-the-wool right-wing conservative from Texas or Alabama or Mississippi or Arkansas or Georgia or Florida or North Carolina or South Carolina or West Virginia or Virginia, right? Where is that California or Oregonian or Washingtonian? What's the middle ground that they meet them on where it's not okay to like rape women and then force them to be a brood mare for the state. I don't see that middle ground. I, I don't see who comes what direction. So I see these 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 differences growing, and that concerns me. That that points to things like balkanization, which I don't think our federal government will allow. Um. Rocket Wayne, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. No one is allowed a sanctity of life argument in this country. No. As long as this country is okay with bombing random children in the Middle East and calling, calling them casualties of war and acceptable collateral, as long as we've got people dying from uh, preventable health care causes, to the tune of tens of thousands a year, as long as we've got homeless people starving in the streets, as long as we have a prison industrial complex that takes advantage of and creates circumstances in which usually young men are violently killed, nobody's allowed a sanctity of life argument. This country does not believe in the sanctity of life.
So in no way, shape, or form do I accept a counter-argument of that. It is, it is a personal property issue. Do you own your own body or not? If you do, then you and the state have no right to tell a person with a womb what they can and can't do with it. It is their safety. It is their mental and physical well-being that is on the line for that pregnancy. Not yours. If there were an, a thing that you would do, that you could do, that could put your life and your, your mental and physical well-being at risk, potentially ending you, and I forced it upon you, that would be a violation of consent, be a violation of the non-aggression principle, it'd be a violation of basic or a moral and ethical frameworks. And that's what that is. It is a violation of the concept of personal property. It is telling women they do not own their bodies. No six, no six week fucking fetus is going to survive outside the body. I'm sorry. It's not a thing. It's not a viable fetus. It's just not, it's not. So too bad. That is true. A corpse has more bodily autonomy than that. That is actually true. It is an attempt to turn, transform, uh, transform them into brood mares for the state. Because let's face it, this country doesn't give a shit about that baby once it's born. Once it's born, it can fuck off and die for all they care until it's of age 17 or 18 so they can recruit it into the military or the police force. Or they turn it into a good consumer. Yeah, it's not symbiotic. Who called it symbiotic? Did somebody say symbiotic? It's parasitic. Hey, Lucy. Hope you're well, Lucy. Yeah, the mother can survive without the fetus. Oh, yeah, no, that's incorrect. Yeah, the mother can the mother can survive without the fetus. The fetus can't survive without the mother. That's a parasitic relationship, not a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, until it's able to survive on its own, it's parasitic. Yeah, Anya, I'm not looking at fucking Lil Nas right now. Yeah. I mean, there's an, even an argument to be made that they're parasitic up until, like, a certain age, even. But it's not my, t it's not my point, Wayne. I would... There is no limit. Because it doesn't affect me. I am a gay man. In no way, shape, or form should I ever have an opinion uh, on... Uh, should I have a say in setting this policy? It doesn't affect me. What? Mind your own fucking business. Like, that's... I'm a good New Englander, right? I'm from New England originally. I, I was schooled in a culture that taught me to mind my own fucking business. Like, that's... Never should I be involved in policy setting for that. And frankly, 
I'm an anarchist. There shouldn't be policy involved in that. That's governmental overreach if there ever was. Yeah, like that's, there should be no policy. There should be no law. There should be no governmental oversight into that. That is a medical issue. It should be between a woman and her doctor. Yeah. Northeast in a nutshell. I want you to have nice things. Now fuck off. Yeah, basically. Um... Trailhead, I'm a bi I'm I'm a whole lot of this country. My palate is set by the Southwest. My affectations are Southern. My soul is New England. Eh, Karina, I'm doing. Zippy, as far as I know, no, it doesn't actually. It has 12-year-olds. Go for it. Oh, Jesus Christ, Lucy. Jesus fucking Christ, Lucy. Fucking A, Lucy. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. It's it's real simple. And as for um, since it involves the semblance of another life, life is a process that began billions of years ago, and is a continual spectrum of existence. A genital wart is alive, technically. Some definitions, no. Some definitions require sentience. They require conscience, consciousness. Some don't. Either way, if it's going to annoy you for life, burn off the wart. Uh, I have, I know, I know Alan. Yes. I know Terrence. I know Alan. I know Jiru. Uh, yes. Watts, McKenna, Krishnamurti. I'm familiar with them all. Um, Yeah, give me a sec, Trailhead. Reading, reading takes a lot out of my voice. Well, vasectomies caboose can be uh, can be reversed. So, if pro-life men are, uh, if anti-abortion men are so worried about uh, abortions. Well, we can just institute a policy of conducting national vasectomies on males as they enter puberty. And if they elect to have children, we can pay as a nation to reverse them. I'm sure they'll be okay with that, right? Since they're okay with dictating how women should be using or be how their bodies should be treated, right? I'm sure that they'd be willing to put their nuts on the line, right? Right? I'm sure they're not hypocrites. Uh, I mean, if all of the males of our country were uh, had vasectomies upon puberty, then the the chance of pregnancy just plummets, right? And with no pregnancies that aren't intentional, 
abortions plummet. Uh, if you had the choice, would you rather go into finance or medicine? I come from a medical family, Ms. I would, I would automatically. Yes. Uh, well, I mean... Um, I mean, nat natural law is nothing more than fucking libertarian capitalists. So, I mean, I would need to watch you, Coconut, but technically all of my things are streamed, are, are published under Creative Commons 4.0, uh, share alike attribution, non-commercial. Um, so theoretically, if you're making money from my stream, my license doesn't cover it. But if you're not affiliated and you're not making any revenue, then you're allowed to restream me by my own license. Twitch has other feelings about that. As for having a conversation, um, no worries. Um, as for having a conversation, um, I am open to it. I've got a, a member of my community who also streams, who is a so-called ANCAP, even though they're fucking neo-feudalists, um, who I get along fine with. Um, we have pleasant conversations and interactions all the time. So by all means, I'm open to it. Um, you, If you want, you can hit me up on my Discord and we can go from there. Um, but um, good luck on your stream as well. Um, and I probably will not be calling you an anarchist, just so you know, until I have further insight into what you actually believe and whether you're using it as a lens of analysis for collapsing down hierarchical power structures. But um, thank you for asking. That is much better than most people do. Um, so in that regard, respect. Um, and yeah, hit me, hit me up. <clears throat> I mean, Jimmy, that's kind of the idea behind saying that, like, we should all fucking be forced to have vasectomies is that government should have no say of anything to do with our bodies in that regard. But, you know, hey. Later, Marcus. Um, oh, yeah, I could take Labor Day off. take a three day uh what are we gonna do um of course jimmy's contract um what are we gonna do for um bad movie night um oh god Uh, no, tonight isn't Breen. Um, or correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't last week Breen? If last week was Breen, this week isn't. Um, because nonsense needs every other week. Um, so, yeah. No, this week isn't Breen. Yeah, last week was brain. Yeah. Um, so this week isn't brain. This week is something else. So we'll have to figure something else. 
uh, something else out for this week. Um, we've got a few options. We've got a few weeks. Uh, a few choices. So, all right. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> Labor Day theme, I don't know. Uh, we do bad movie nights on Fridays on the Discord server. Um, people are always welcome. Um, but yeah, we decompress from the week of shit. And we just get fucked up and watch bad movies. Um, hey, I mean, I'm down. Um, oh, Karina, you know what I watched? Um, like sometime recently i watched the tank girl movie because we had we had talked about tank girl and it came up my fucking list and there was i was like eh, fuck it i'm watching tank girl um yeah the movies you know but yeah It's 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 kind of hit and miss. It's a little slow. It drags at parts, but I, I I like it. It's it's fun. The aesthetic is there. The aesthetic of Tank Girl is in the movie, so it passes. Yeah, it passes. The animated segments were done by your traditional 2D animation teacher in college. That's so fucking cool, Karina. The the 2D the animation portions of the Tank Girl movie are really solid. Yeah, um, fucking and you know, post-apocalyptic water. Fucking, of course, a, a, basically a corporation. It's essentially uh, water and power, right? Um, but you know, water and power fucking controls all the water and power in the sort of desert wasteland that is the, the world after the asteroid, comet, meteor, I forget. It's like an asteroid or something. Fucking hits the earth and fucks everything up. Either way. Um, Lucy, there's a reason for that. Postmodern, uh, postmodernism, uh, the, the wave of postmodernism in the 1990s ruined all of like cheesiness. Basically everything is self-aware now due to postmodernism. And so it ruined all of that like completely unaware bad movie energy that we had in the like 50s, 60s, 70s and culminating in the 80s. After the 90s, it's very difficult to get a bad movie, like a properly bad movie because of postmodernism. Yeah. Oh, interesting, Karina. I didn't know that. Um, Willy's Wonderland is self-aware. It's self-aware. Uh, okay, cool. Um, doing it, doing it, doing it. Uh, let me find that person. I don't, I don't see that name in chat. Cassidy, I don't, I don't see that name in chat. Do you mean? Ah, okay. Stupid, stupid. There's merit to that. Eh. Pointless in that context. Doesn't understand. That's true. Doesn't understand economic modalities. Unnuanced. That's stupid, and socialist countries haven't banned postmodernism. Are you fucking? 
Okay. So like you're like 85% either like just bad takes. Anna, um, takes more than just but welcome. Um, <laughs> oh, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. They're a fucking, they're a has stan, of course. That explains, well, that explains all of this. That explains all of this. They don't believe, dude, fucking, never mind. Uh, every single one of these takes makes sense now. Yeah, that context just clears it. Um. Yeah, like instantly. <laughs> Hey, nonsense. We're just we're just fucking with the tanky right now. Hey, Danny. Uh, Jawazan, this is your boy getting made fun of in music form. Nice nonsense. Um, I now I have a I have a legitimate question for um, Jawazan is it Jawazan Jawazan whatever. I have a legitimate question for them if they're still here if they haven't fucked off and fled right. Okay. You said every socialist country has banned postmodernism. One, I'm going to need you to cite your sources on that one. Two, well, one, I'd love to know what socialist countries exist. Um, but two, I would love to, uh, for, to see some sources on that one. <laughs> How has China, probably? You're going to go with China? Um... Or what? Cuba? Vietnam? You're going to go with Vietnam? Which, which, who are you going to go with? Sh show me them formally. I want, I want banned. I want to see the law. I want to see the Chinese law that bans postmodernism. And then I'm going to show you examples of Chinese modern cinema that utilize postmodernism. Were you not speaking about postmodern? Because I was speaking speaking about postmodernism when you tagged me and said that there's a uh, there's a reason every socialist country has banned it. Now, if you were having your own side conversation about sex work at that time, and I was literally talking about postmodernism, then I understand how this uh, got conflated. But you understand I wasn't talking about sex work when you tagged me. So I don't know why you're telling me that there's a reason every socialist country has banned sex work.
and banning it, it's it's banned in most places, but it still happens in China. Do you think prostitution doesn't happen in China? Are you really under those illusions or delusions in this is instance? Right? Like, so where's the moral superiority? Oh, and by the way, uh, we have lower sex trafficking rates in uh, the areas that have um, legalized prostitution. You can see Australia, Portugal, Netherlands for these sorts of things. Um, we have lower disease rates. It increases, uh, it increases a whole market segment of profitability for underprivileged women. It allows us regulatory control over it rather than it being a black market. Right? Like this is, this is the argument for, uh, for and against uh, the war on drugs, right? It's stupid. The, the war on drugs creates an illicit market in which you have no regulatory control whatsoever and allows criminals to thrive. A regulated, o an open market that is regulated and analyzed allows for control mechanisms to be put into place. Yes, there is always room for a side illicit market, but it minimizes the effect of that. Whereas you would normally have 100% of the market share in an illicit marketplace, you could be reduced to 30% or 20% or 15 or 10 or 5 it makes no economic or political science sense, and any analyst would get behind that. It doesn't matter which illicit object, substance, service, activity that we're talking about. Creating a black market allows for criminality to thrive. A woman deciding of her own volition, a human being deciding of their own volition that they wish to engage in sexual activity for profit without the coercive elements applied is not exploitation. And the fact that it still exists in your socialist utopia means that there seems to be coercive economic elements that are forcing people into prostitution in your beloved China. So you can't fall back on capitalism, or you're going to have to admit that China is capitalist. So why is there illegal prostitution happening in China? Should probably be the question that you have to answer. Neither is the U.S., Neither is Europe, neither is Africa. Humanity isn't perfect. But China's capitalist. Yeah, <laughs> state capitalism. It's state capitalism. Even Lenin called it that. It's state-run capitalism. It's capitalism. It still uses hierarchical organizational modalities and coercive and oppressive uh, uh, um, elements to force the populace into conducting in behavior patterns that they would not normally naturally conduct themselves in. It's capitalism. It's just got red aesthetics to it, that's all. Second, second largest amount of billionaires in the world. Multinational co uh, corporations that run their people into the ground so hard that they jump off the buildings rather than put, do another day at work. Right? It's just as toxic. It's got the same environmental problems, if not more. The pollution and water table pollution, the air and water table pollution that occurs in and around China is insane. The amount of imperialistic bullshit that China gets up to in Africa using the Belt and Road Initiative to co uh, coerce uh, governmental operatives into selling out their own people for the purposes of deforestation and mining on, uh, on the continent of Africa is akin to the same thing that Europe or America would do. Yes, imperialistic. And if we need to go to the International Encyclopedia of Political Science to, de uh, to define imperialism for you, then we can. Or we could just use, use a Leninistic definition, which I'm sure you're going to default to from the, uh, the pamphlet or brochure that Lenin wrote back in the day. Sweetheart, boo-boo, I'm educated on this shit. 
right? I already know what you're going to go to. I know your talking points. I know what you're going to fall back on. So why don't you bring some shit? Or just fuck off and run back to your boy. Yeah. Yeah, we probably need to put imperialism as a fucking command at this point for... Uh. It's fine. I don't mind a good distraction. We were just reading uh, Understanding Power. We were just having a good conversation. We were talking about how all human beings are capable of both the angelic and the demonic. And that no one is above and beyond. But, I mean... Mm, yes, sure it does. Except it needs capitalism. This is Dengism. It needs capitalism. If it didn't need capitalism, it wouldn't allow it. It needs it. Cap China literally relies upon it. They're nothing without it. Neoliberal hyper-capitalism made the modern China what it is. At the hands of Deng who, by the way, it bears responsibility for Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square, yeah. <laughs> um, it, yeah, public. It was just, uh, you know, and yeah. Um, they're whole, they're basically reliant upon the West for their market share, who, by the way, is free market capitalism. Depends if you're talking to a neo-feudalist or not as to whether they're going to know true Scotsman free market capitalism to you or, uh, on you or not. That, but that's another conversation with somebody like Scott. None of almost none of the companies I would argue I would I'd wager you that we have more worker owned co-ops than China does. You want to talk about socialism, public ownership of the means of production, right? I would argue we probably have more worker owned co-ops in the West than China does. We're probably doing more socialism than China is. Wow, that was really a fucking brilliant takedown of my uh, of my thesis. Um, what is your fucking name? I don't pay attention. Joe was on. Lol. Okay, that's such an Anglo take. Wow, cool. That's that's that was a well nuanced, researched, cited, um, and uh, espousing of tons of theory. Uh, it's a good takedown of of what I just said for sure, for sure. <laughs> White guy. They're not sending their best. They're not sending their best. Oh, well, I mean, they're tankies. So, I mean, by definition, they're not their best. Um, it's probably, I mean, he's probably a white dude to start with, too. I'm, I'm guessing probably suburban white dude. Upper middle class, usually. It runs a single union controlled by the state. That's not a union. A, a labor force that is directly controlled by the authoritarian centralized power structure of the state is not a union. That's not how that works.
centralizing authoritarian communists, man. They're fucking goofy as shit. Um, I got other shit too. Here, I need to check. What block are we on? 243... 199? Okay, so I got... 8,000 more blocks to do? Cool. It's a thing, just not in China. <laughs> I ended up on a show the other day where during the course of the convo, it came out, you yelled at him for streaming you before. Those folks are wild. You're kind of young, I think, uh, so I don't hate him. Uh, just kind of young, I think, so I don't hate him. Uh, yeah, you don't fucking restream people. Nonsense. Like, you at least ask. You ask. That's, that's, you ask permission, right? Wither was being kind and cute, so check your bingo cards. I mean, based on public, based on the Leninistic definition of uh, so what socialism is, then they can backdoor it. Basically, Lenin said that socialism is nothing more than state capitalism. So it depends whose fucking definition that you're uh, you're gonna go with. But they tend to fall back to Lenin because Marxian critiques would negate their uh, their ideology. Uh, infrared was restreaming this girl and hitting on her creepily hard last night it was so gross he wouldn't stop talking about her body and his uh, dirty tos thoughts yeah that sounds about that sounds about right for him he's got issues that dude's got issues like for real he's got issues yeah i i yeah <laughs> i worry sometimes i worry like he he could hurt somebody. Um, this is why I find the term Marxist Leninist. Uh, this is why the term Marxist Leninist is I find laughable. Says Lucy, it is dude. Marxian critiques almost negate Leninism like out of the gate, and I mean Stalinism is a complete one eighty on Marxism for the most part. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Jeffrey James, that'll happen. That means you're getting too old for it. When you can't bounce back from it the next day, you're getting too old and it's time to give it up. I sure as hell wouldn't leave a female friend alone with Has. No, I wouldn't either. For sure. I'd, I'd want a room full of people with him at all times. Honestly. I wouldn't want to be alone with him either. I'd, I'd fear for my safety too. I, I think a, a, a cute girl would get fucking like sexually assaulted. I think I might get beat. Yeah. I, I honestly, like I would not want to be alone in the room with him. No matter what gender or sexual identity you may have with that man he yeah he gives that energy it's concerning legitimately read something recently about communism and authoritarian recently i was like what uh, i mean awkward there is and comms you lose a female friend leaving her with him i mean sure uh zippy save yourself the trouble save yourself the trouble Grandma's family were Mensheviks uh, and ran from Tsarists in 1914. Thank God they had stayed for the revolution. So not a Lenin-Stalin fan. Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> why are we listening to somebody who named themselves after Jeb Bush? <laughs> why is that not? Why is that not moved? Sorry, I'm doing, I got processes running behind the scenes and it stalled out fucking, oh 
god, I swear to god, it better finish. One sec. Task manager this shit. Alright, it's still working. So. Totally legit. <laughs> totally legal. Totally cool processes. Uh, that part is legal. That part is 100% above, uh, above board. He can't even do a fucking OK symbol anymore because the 4chan fucking morons turned everything into a racist fucking dog whistle. It's fucking ridiculous. Can't wear a fucking Hawaiian shirt. Can't fucking make an OK symbol because these fucking geniuses ruined everything. I swear to God. 4chan is a curse upon this earth. I mean, have we reclaimed Pepe? Like, truly? So then Norway, Ireland, and Switzerland are at the top of that list for HDI. If you're going to use the HDI, um, then basically you're looking to the Nordic model. Which straps capitalism to the floor as much as they can. Increases social safety net programs, um, you know, yeah. But, again, um, where is, uh, where are those idiots? They're not on, oh, Jesus Christ, they're not even, they don't even, oh, they're number seven. See, but they're also very police nanny statey about a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Which... I mean, like, Sweden is number seven on this list for HDI, and they maintain that if they suspect you have been smoking cannabis, they have the right as the state to strap you in a chair, forcibly withdraw your blood, test you for active metabolites, and arrest you and sentence you if found. So, this doesn't take into account how propagandized or fucked in the head their population already is. Right? Because the Swedish are weirdly okay with it. The Norwegians are at the top of the list. The Norwegians are always at the top of the list. Um, also one of the highest suicide rates. Weird uh, corollary, maybe? Oh, no, Sidewalk, we talked about it earlier. I, I went into, you can go on the Discord server and watch the videos if you want. Um, a great protest this week. There's the Proud Boys and other righty groups coalition trying to do this. The symbols of... Uh, pass it over here. Nice, nice. Okay, good on you, Lucy. Uh, no. What the fuck is that even? Nonsense. Oh, it's an... For fuck's sake. It's an app. Quantum generate... No, I haven't... I haven't tried this. Nonsense. Um... Why are you stuck and not moving? gonna bother me um that's fucking hours of work wasted nice lucy
Can I ask a very short, totally not scientifically based question? If I met a Nazbol, would my uninformed brain think of tanky or Nazi fascist first? You probably think Nazi fascist first. Um, Mulata, you probably think Nazi fascist first. If if you're if you're not as if you're as not educated on it as you think, um, I would say it would probably read to you as like Nazi fa Nazi slash fascism first before it read tanky. Yeah. depends it depends are they waving a flag or not Lolata? if they're waving a flag it's going to read tanky if they're not re waving a flag then it, it'll probably read fascist to you it the flag is the is the giveaway because they use the fucking red hammer and sickle aesthetics right like if you get to see the flag you'll you'll think tanky if you don't get to see the flag i think you might read them as fascist just depends. Um. Nice, Lucy. Good on you. Oh. Oh. Um. No, they used to, Okay. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, see, that's that's the thing. Is it all sort of depends on what, what fucking symbolism they're trying to slip by you on that one. Um. All right, it's 918, and we still are going to do bad movie night. So, and I still have, like, I have food to make. Um, like, I have I have processes to do. Um, there are 20,000 people watching Hassan. Jesus goddamn Christ. I got no one. Um... We don't know yet. Nonsense. We don't know. Since we're not doing brain because you're you're going to be absent, we, we, we literally don't know yet. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't need to do that. Yeah, public. Give me one. Yeah, I'm good, nonsense. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to copy and paste it either way. <laughs> uh, public. So, um, but duly noted. For me? Oh, God, fucking... I mean, they're not political at all. Okay, public, this is on you. Public, go ahead and, like, give him the warning. Like, does he want the raid? Like, if you don't mind, public. Um, yes, the that happens in Discord, Lucy. I don't mind raiding him, um, but ask him for me, please, public. Yeah. Like don't I don't want to I don't want to raid a non-political streamer and just be like hi you don't know me but fucking here here I'm here <laughs> deal with it um uh, why is this not moving in block size God damn it dude Duffy just exclamation Discord in chat. Like, send yourself, send yourself the fucking Discord, Duffy. (laughs) 
Uh, I mean, if they have a mod, yeah, like that's that's the thing. Oh, Jesus Christ! I didn't mean to click that. Um. Okay. God, Twitch's shit is just. Yeah, we don't know what we're doing, uh, but yeah, that all happens in Discord. If you want to join us for Bad Movie Night on Fridays, uh, we recommend that you get fucked up. Um, don't do it sober. Don't do it sober. Um, either way, it's been a weird night. It's been a weird night. It's been a weird night. We had a bunch of fucking weirdness tonight. Um, yeah. I don't know what to make of it. Either way. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys on Monday. Um, you know, I'm, I'm available on Discord and I'm around. Um, but yeah, I think, I'll, I think I'll stream on Monday. I think I'll stream on Monday. Not 100%. But either way, yes. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, do it quickly. Do it quickly, Lucy. Everybody click Lucy's link. Uh, it's available in my Discord server too. Um, what Lucy's going to put in. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Lucy!